square. What is up, Square Hammers? It's your boy, Blue. I am here with my buddy, Zach, right above me. And we are going to talk about the Brawler Bash GT. We're going to talk about the uh, Nova Open. We're going to talk about the Richmond Open. And then a little FAQ that uh, myself, Ken, and Todd tried to get Todd on here, but um, he doesn't have a webcam. He ordered one, but it's not in yet. So we're going to talk about an FAQ that we've been working on because we're all, us three are TOs. And then basically a list of uh, rules to keep in mind as you're playing and playing the game. So Zach, he did really well. Oh, hi, Todd. He's actually in the chat. So what's up, dude? Uh, hopefully your mic arrives soon and then we can get you on here too. So first we can, uh, well, hi, Zach. What's up, dude? Ch yes, chilling, chilling. Uh, I heard you, well, actually, I know you had a good time at Brawler Bash. You had some great games and I think, were you placed fifth overall, or is close? Close. Hmm. Okay. Oh wow. That's that's really close. <laughs> that's that's half a banner. <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay. Yep. Yep. Fourth. No volume for, no volume for him. Hey, at least it's my not my audio that's messing up this time. Yes. Okay. So how do we get your audio working? Oh, you know what? Boom. That's probably it right there. Start. Say hello. Say hello, Zach. How's it going, everybody? Yes. Remember when you had Ken on? I think Ken's audio, you had to probably enable him or something. Yep, so I think y'all should be able to hear him now. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a couple hundreds if I you see could. A, I see a couple hearts. So that's probably good. Okay, so what were okay. you saying? So you got um, tied for fourth because you yeah. were 20 points off fourth, basically? Yeah, yeah. I made the executive decision that I tied for fourth, but really, you know, got fifth place. Um, out of like 30-some people, so solid showing. Mm -hmm. I... Um, complained the whole ride down because we uh, carpooled down with a couple other guys we complained the whole ride down that i hated my list car and system wasn't going to be good for me i was gonna you know go oh and five and just learn some new rules make some good friends uh you know you did none of that good... yeah yeah <laughs> so now no, you, you complained more than just the ride down i remember for like a couple weeks he was messaging in one of the facebook groups is like what else suck we were not gonna do I... well I was just struggling yeah. and I hadn't won a single game in old world, except for when I played an empire. List. Okay. I won one game. We played like two turns. Um, and That's we kind of found out, yeah, we found out that vampire counts are really, really good versus what else. Sure. Um, I want to, I don't want to say it's a hard counter, but it's one of those lists where everything's unbreakable. Yep. Everything is just, you don't have really, enough shots. They can't panic them. It's, you don't it's, have magical attacks on yeah. a lot of your stuff uh, yeah. if you don't bring a lot of trees. So vampire counts are a really tough list, and that's what I played, you know, almost exclusively for the for the practice game. So I was right. ready to get whooped. <laughs> well, it seems like you did over, overall pretty darn well. So uh, what did you play against? What armies did you play against? Um, so I played against a dwarf player round one. Okay. Um, that was kind of a pretty balanced dwarf list it had some uh like hammers um long beards some some shooting here and there so it was a pretty balanced dwarf list okay then round two i actually played another dwarf player who was a heavy gun line um turtle in a bunker kind of list okay uh, which i thought was going to be super tough for me to play against um round three i had todd's warriors of chaos which was an absolutely banger of a game love that one he got my vote for uh best sport and nice. uh he won that got some nice brass knuckles for uh yeah. for so his funny. prize <laughs> yeah um so at that point i think todd and i were right around first second third kind of placing okay um round four played against brett's and nice. round five empire 
So Brent's... pretty di- other than dwarfs twice, it was pretty diverse. Yeah, a lot okay. of armor though. Just on, on it was just really weird because I played against mm. no armor going into it, and then all of a sudden I'm playing against dwarf, dwarf, Brett's warriors, empire. Well, what half right. your half your list was uh, arcane bodkins, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. so and you had plague of rust, and I'm guessing did you have lore familiar on your wizard, so you could always nope. take it? Oh, you just nope. rolled it every once in a while. Okay, that's good. Rolled it, and if I didn't roll it up, I stuck it on the sisters. Okay. And, uh, tried. So I guess first we could talk about. Let's first talk about instead of um. Instead of your games, we can come back to that. Mm-hmm. I think people are probably interested in both, but I think appealing to more of the masses, it's actually talking about rules and FAQs. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's not Richmond Open. Where you at? So, Brawler Bash, for folks that haven't been tuning in, was mm-hmm. a um, two-day, five-round carnage system type of scoring where it was just all killing stuff. Um, tons of questions popped up throughout the whole event. Um you know, if, if, if you could ask somebody next to you, get their opinion, you know, that was a really good way to solve it. Every now and then you'd call over the TOs. Everyone's got their books. Everyone's flipping through, borrowing <laughs> books, scrolling through. Um, we started to find out that there was a consensus, consensus that rules we thought we knew, we really didn't have a good grasp on some of them, yeah. um, which led to kind of this nice to know list. Okay, so... I guess we could start with that. Let's start with that. Uh, let's start with FAQ, since you brought it up. All right, so Todd, Ken, and I have been working on this FAQ. So this one, a lot of people are saying yes, but and we might even change it back to yes. Uh, so the first one is, can you use the drilled rule to redress ranks and then charge? I want to say no because it seems so strong for only one point per model to be able to redress the ranks and then charge. That seems extremely cheap for what it can do. Um, Because it's you add five wide, you go five wider, and then you charge. So that's a ton of extra attacks. Um, It just seems really wonky. You can then charge stuff that you weren't able to charge because if you did the spin thing, like you just wheel and touch an enemy unit that's maybe hiding on the right or something. So... <clears throat> I, I almost want to see it where it's allowed and see what kind of funky stuff people can do. Right. Like that's why I kind of liked Brawlers, the no comp uh, originally. Just so I want to see the upper bounds of shenanigans. Okay. To kind of well, this this was at stuff. this was at Brawlers. You couldn't right, redress right. and charge. Yeah. Um. And I I think the my gut feeling again was no. It seems a little wonky, but I almost want to play it a little bit with yes and just sure. see what someone can do. Not me, because I don't really have ranks and what else and stuff like that. But like, I want to see what someone else gets. You could uh, do um, do the Rangers? Can they get drilled? I think they can get know, veteran, but can they get I, drilled too? I know the Glade Riders can get drilled. Well, and really, okay. that's just for not that's testing nothing. the leadership because yeah. you know you can. Oh, you can't get march blocked when you have it. I think is what that is. But does drilled? Do the Wildwood Rangers have drilled? Wildwood Rangers are pretty good with the amount of stuff that has fear in this game. They're actually pretty nasty because they get like what is it extra attack and multiple wounds too. So like they can slap you something. Talked about that or like that's my last hope if this yeah. list I bring sucks was <laughs> yeah it's over the ranger. Like at least I'll fall back on them. Uh, you make oh. a good point, Todd. In ancients, it does allow you to charge, but it's hard to know. You can't base it off older games, but you kind of can sometimes too. So hopefully GW just releases an FAQ that addresses like extra questions and then we don't have to do this. And I know Mountain Miniatures is uh, working on their own FAQ, but I don't know if they've released it or if they just like talked about it. So we've had this one for a couple weeks. So, okay. Can you choose the best armor regen, save, and split profile? Yes, I think that's actually in the rule book, but a lot of people were asking questions. So you get to choose either to use the mounts or the character's armor save. Uh, an easy one. Sorry. Which I was playing wrong in my first couple test games. Um, really? Yeah, I was combining Rider with mm. um, Mount, thinking that the Mount's armor was armored hide. Gotcha. And it said it was like, oh, full scale, uh, draconic scales counts as full plate or something. Full plate. And I was like, oh, that's armored hide. Like, okay. Yeah. And then right. I realized, like, oh, there's really a rule that says armored hide on mm-hmm. dragon ogres or something like that. Once I saw that, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm playing that wrong. It's kind of like you were doing a uh, a WAP thing where you like that's how it worked in WAP. You would stack the armor saves. Okay, so here's one. There's a little error that they made where Hellish Vigor. Um, there's a different book. Like there's a different value in the casting value. It says nine to twelve, but then in the spell itself, it says seven to ten. 
So based on one of the other spells, I think it's the Tomb King one, it says it's they're both 7 to 10, so we figured have it mimic the Tomb King one. Don't know which one's right, but that's the one we went with. So when Dispelling remains in play spells, you always use the lowest value uh, spell of on the um, thing. So let's say if it was a 7 and a 10, you only have to get rid of a 7, which yeah. seems pretty obvious for like for most people. It's pretty, pretty tough when I'm trying no to No drill, woods. what else? Gotcha. It is yeah, tough. Yeah. Yeah, trying to grow woods and I'm trying to block line of sight and you're dispelling on the lowest value. It's like, oh, but I rolled super well. <laughs> so dispelling a spell requires rolling over the casting value, not equal. Yep. There is an error in the quick reference. If y'all didn't notice that, in the quick reference at the end of the book, it says you you dispel if you tie. But then if you go like in the middle of the book, where like the whole sheet is written out, uh, it says you just have to beat it. So we went with beat it because... I, because obviously we think that makes more sense. Um, and then even I think in the quick reference that you get in the uh, the the box sets, I think it says tie, if I'm not mistaken. So that one's pretty easy, self-explanatory. On subsequent rounds of combat, or even if you get charged, are units still susceptible to overrun? Yes, because they don't <laughs> clarify either way. So it's just if you wipe out your enemy before uh, break tests are checked or taken, you potentially can overrun, even if you get charged. Yep. Just, just how it's written. I think written. the funny, the funny chat was, uh, if my great eagle charges your dwarf hammers in the flank and you annihilate my eagle, can you overrun forward? Yes. Yeah, I think you have. <laughs> don't you have to go? Like that's now that's another question that needs to be asked. Which way do you overrun? It's right. ju- is it straightforward or is it the direction that you were like chopping down the enemy? I don't know. Yep. Um, a lot of I think rules is written it's probably you would overrun the way that you were um facing no no not the way you were oh. facing the way that you actually got charged because i think as fluff wise they're trying to mimic it as if like if you fail the to restrain from overrun you're like your unit is pushing into their unit chopping them down so mm-hmm. your whole unit goes that direction that they are so i think you would probably have to turn to face whichever way but again it's not clarified. Yeah, I so, can see that. Because if you do overrun, it's basically like a... It's not a pursuit move, but you would... I, what other options do you have other than treating it as a pursuit move and going and, after what was there? So you pivot on your center and go with that way. And with a lot of these, you know, a little bit of common sense and judgment calls are used, but uh, really, for some of them, you could kind of go either way, and as long as everyone's playing consistently, you're, you're probably fine. Like, you know... It's, if somebody said, no, you had to go straight, I don't think anybody would really be like, all right, I'm super upset about it. You know, it's just, all right, whatever whatever we want to do. So. See, now I hear you, Todd, you say go forward, but like, I don't, like it says must move directly forwards without pivoting. So, mm-hmm. oh, that's so weird too. <laughs> Without pivoting makes sense, so it's whichever way you're facing. I don't know. I don't know. They just need to FAQ it, and I don't care, because that's so dumb. If somebody uh, wanted to go sideways on the overrun, I probably wouldn't argue with them. Cause it's yeah, because it makes more sense. <laughs> um, all right, so... I, I, I love this one, though. Is damage from a miscast magical? Someone always asks that every every edition, and I'm always like... Well, it's because they don't freaking <laughs> say it. They've had how many editions? I think... In 8th edition, it didn't clarify. In, uh, it was either 6th or 7th when it, I think it said it counted as magical, but then for some reason, the 8th, they, they didn't write it. And then uh, in this edition, they didn't write it. Um, so it should count as magical. It's literally like magical arcane energies feedbacking and like going off. It should be magical. Don't get um, me started on enchanted and magical stuff. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so do single models with close order and lumbering here, can you move your um, oh, move your click? Thank you. Uh, give plus one combat resolution. Yes, because the special rules take pres- uh, precedence. So I know when I was talking to Steve from Mountain Gaming, I was just trying to be devil's advocate. And it's like, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, but we just went ahead and said, at least for this, that yes, it gives plus one combat res. Um, and hopefully GW like would clarify that because... And I'm alright with either way, like reading it both ways, I lean towards yeah, it does sure. give you an extra plus one, but I'm like if somebody you know, if they if they say no, it's like okay, like whatever whatever we want to do. You know. Mm-hmm. 
So do assailment spells work in challenges? Yes. It can be cast when a wizard fights during the combat phase and a challenge is in the combat phase. So yes, but the spell only affects the challenge model. And then it's also um, talked about in the GW FAQ. I think they even talk about if, if your assailment spell is a template, I think the template only hits the guy in the challenge, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was that ogre player at Brawlers that had the spectral doppelganger with the template um, sure. weapon, and mm-hmm. I never I got to ask if he got into a challenge what happened with this thing. I don't even know if he knew what would happen if he got, if he got into point. the challenge. So. <laughs> well, it would just do, what, 2d6 hits on the guy in the challenge, because I think the, the FAQ right. talks about that the template only hits okay. stuff okay. in the challenge. So it should just... 2d6 of the Thunder Mace or whatever he was running. I don't remember which one. Um, what is this you're reading? Uh, Andrew, this is just a uh, FAQ that a couple of TOs and myself have been assembling to clear. We might not be right on any, or maybe we're right on all of these, but it's just to make it so there's a general consensus of the tournament. So there's not like one person saying, arguing one way and arguing the other. This is trying to just answer as many questions as we can before the tournament starts, so we save arguments during in time during the actual uh, playtime. So, do you need to move, roll Impetuous if a friendly model that is not charging blocks, blocks the way? No, unless the blocking unit is charging and may get out, get out of the way because you can't declare an impossible charge. So if the unit stays in front of you and is not getting out of the way, then you don't have to roll Impetuous char- charge or Impetuous roll because your unit's not going to get out of your way so it's an illegal charge so obviously that makes sense if the blocking unit isn't charging then it's an impossible charge which could not be declared so no seems pretty self-explanatory um, just like with frenzy same thing with frenzy if yep. frenzy is blocking you if you have your own unit blocking you from frenzy then you can't make you can't declare the charge because it's impossible so you don't have to do it I kind of had my eagle. I called it my pace car. My eagle was kind of in front of my uh, wild riders, and it was like, nice. you know, they're kind of trying to keep them in check until it's time to go. Green hold, green. hold, <laughs> caca, caca. That's what I was telling. Uh, so, if a unit is fleeing and reduced to twenty five percent or less, you get seventy five percent of the points. This is a change directly from us because we think only if you have twenty percent of your unit left, your opponent shouldn't only get twenty five percent of its points because they've killed at least 75% of the units. So why are you, they only getting 25% of the points? It doesn't make sense. So I don't especially, know if they made a typo or not. So especially in that card system where you want to get points oh, for God. killing stuff, yes. I can see where this was like a fit of just like, you know what, for our event that, you know, they were running down North Carolina. It's like, yeah, we want to get points for killing stuff. So, and I think you should sense. here too, like on, on any event, it should be 75% because not only that, but based on, the GW rules, you don't get any yep. points for a dragon that has one wound left. You do yes. nine wounds to it, we, you get we no damage. We actually had that come up a couple times. Um, I forget who I was playing. Um, you know, and speaking of this, I actually scrolled through. I didn't see this one in there. Um, I talked to Ken about this round one because I was like, this is never going to happen. I'm not going to even think about this too much, but it happened round one. What was it? Four. Um, my character was in a challenge with uh, a dwarf king, I believe, and I killed the dwarf king, cut the beard off, um, <gasps> in the goes in the book dragon attacking initiative phase of the fight. Okay, and the question was, which is, it had been bounced around, was does that challenge end mm. right then, and then his hammers get to attack my yeah. um, dragon? Yeah. That's a big one, and too. then I get to stomp back. Or does that challenge keep on going till the end of the combat round? Kind of like, does that protective bubble around the challenge end or not? And I was fine either way, however folks want to do it. I was like, you know, just get a ruling and then keep it the same for the entire event. So I remember I walked right up to Ken and said, Ken, didn't expect to have to ask this this early, but what do you want to do with this? And if ever he thought about it, he goes, hmm. (laughs) That that one's uh, also huge online right now there's a whole bunch of people asking questions about it because it never it says when a challenge is ongoing and nowhere does it say what does ongoing mean does it mean it goes to when one person is dead or does it mean that entire combat step it does not clarify either way so it's like whatever we as a community decide to do until gw clarifies it because 
there are people playing it both ways. So we just need to have a solid answer. So Ken went with, um, you know, your challenge is going until the end of that combat round and then they're freed up. So kind of the <laughs> old eighth edition kind of feel yeah. that we were thinking of. I'm okay with either way. Cause the dragon had some stomp attacks has hammers could have done some stuff. So, you know, yeah, we'll whatever, see, whatever was ruled, I was fine. It's one of the things where if you rule it one way, it will hurt dragons, which dragons, on in my opinion, are way too strong. So I think they need to be hurt a little bit. Uh, they need to be toned down. So if you challenge, um, it's 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 complicated. I think you have to think it's also based a little bit on total war. So if you throw in a dragon at a guy in a unit that's uh, like a character on Total War, he will attack that character, and you can keep attacking that character until he dies. But the the other models, like pixels in the in the game, are still attacking that dragon. So it's it's hard to know right. what they're trying to base it on. Uh, Dubois, yes, I got it working, but there's a problem because when you click start streaming on OBS, it did it's made its own event again. But we figured it out, so it was a hassle. I will say I do agree that some dragons need to get toned down. A little bit more than others, you know, like the Wood Elf Dragon is not, not that bad. But in a challenge, it's pretty good. Yeah. So it's like minus two to be hit. You think you they're it. super duper strong until you run up against three great cannons and then a steam tank cannon. And sure. then you're like, this thing sucks. What am I yeah. doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you had impassable terrain to hide behind, then uh it wouldn't yeah. be shot. But yeah. Um we'll how give there. Chaos uh, dragons are really strong though. Dragons need to be hurt. It's true. Um yeah, I feel like it should have said the whole turn. It should have, because that would make it so much easier if they just clarify that. How would overkill work if the challenge stops? So I know stomp says you may continue to stomp the dead targets. So you can always try to rack up... Uh... Like easy ones? Yeah, yeah. But, but does it say anywhere that if your character... If, you're, if the challengee or challenger, if one of them is dead, and then you decide to stomp them, or just like the next initiative step, does that dead model still get a save, or is it just free wounds? No, we well, we played it as you still got all your ward, your armor, all that stuff. But see, like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You're dead. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, do yeah, you yeah. get yeah. saves? Yeah. You're dead. So it's it's another thing where it's being played in multiple ways. So which freaking one is it? Or if you kill the character in combat, you can you not stomp the at initiative? It's now a different initiative step. There's no one to swing at except someone if the challenge is over. So you swing out of combat into like the unit. And I tried not to get too gamey and just like um, I tried to give like benefit to my opponent for like some of those gray areas where it was like, do they get a save? I'm like, yeah, like I'm not just going to stomp your dead body and, you know, give you nothing like, you know, I don't want to just completely destroy something. Uh, sure. Uh, you know, you gotta stop have it a to dust. Yeah. yeah, you got to have a little fun. OK, let's go to the next one. So. Uh, let's see. Can monsters creatures stomp other monsters? Yes, this is in the rules. They just don't get to use mm -hmm. the AP two, right? Mm -hmm. Like the you just, you just have to roll better than your opponent when you're in a dragon versus dragon fight. Yep. Like Todd rolls a six for his stomp, I roll a two, and then I'm like, all right, my dragon's better. <laughs> <laughs> well, based on how your models are built, like his is like way above yours, and yours is like you know the old wood elf one, and his is like way up here, like stomping. Yeah. So it makes sense. Okay, line of sight. Line of sight is drawn from the base of models. I think this is just copy and pasted from the book. If a straight, uninterrupted line can blah, blah, blah. Yep, basically just bases to bases. Uh, yeah, it's to stop, you know, somebody yeah, like putting... A wing is way out here, or a sword is out here. Not, we're not trying to have it like 40k, where one corner of my model, of my wing, can see your unit, so everything gets to shoot at your unit. But then, obviously, your entire unit could shoot at my wing tip. But no, it's just bases to base. Yeah. Or you draw like a chaos giant or a regular giant isn't on like uh, a little tiny, you know, miniature, you know, really tiny. So it's like, oh, you can't see him behind all this stuff. Right. Yeah. You can see my base, but there's terrain in the way. So you yeah. can't see. Yeah. That kind of crap. Uh, do you have to use Swift Stride on a flea roll? No, because it says may. So you may roll the extra D6. So if you roll low enough that you don't pop through a unit because you don't want it to take a leadership check, well, then you don't have to roll the D6. So it says you may add the D6. So that means you can roll the 2D6 and then add it later, depending on mm -hmm. what the roll is. And so, a couple times with Smith Stride, I would roll 3D6 out of habit, 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, nope, that's not how it works. And I'm like trying to grab the dice real quick. You know, I'm just like, that rolled. <laughs> it's no yep. good. I think I did it against like Todd or somebody where I'm like, my brain, we're, we were, our brains were fried by the time we got to round three sure. on that long day. And I remember I was like, I need to roll the Swiss drive. The mm-hmm. way. It's two dice, drop one, add another one. Yep. Uh, for charging, at least. Uh, could you, yes. you want to read the next one? Uh, do I take panic text? Panic tests for friendly units within six inches if I fall back in good order. Yes, if your unit strength five or more, or the fleeing unit moves through a friendly unit, which the unit strength doesn't matter then, which we actually were just talking about last night with um, yep. little Skaven and Gracier running through a 37 block of storm vermin causing panic. Yes, panic-tech. they did not realize that a one, you could have one unit strength one, and if it runs through a unit of a thousand, it's going to cause a panic unless they're ITP, just what it is, which is weird um unless they're skirmishers right because actually i guess the gracier wouldn't cause one right because he's kind of a skirmisher lone model right if you're um, a lone model character wouldn't don't you kind of skirmishers we actually Skirm- talked about that too because uh he forms up to the hippogriff that was charging him remember because we were talking about that i was like oh you can't fit in his flight yeah so like, he oh, would <laughs> he didn't fail the panic check so that's good yeah, yeah, but yeah. i think i think you wouldn't actually have to take it now that i think about that um What's he saying? Armageddon, line of sight for cover. Many players aren't counting how their front skirmishers partial. What? Let me read this. He's saying um, if you have a unit of skirmishers at a couple different ranks, uh, or not ranks, just formed up a little oddly. Gotcha. The ones in the back might not be able to see. I was trying to be really, really good about that with myself. No, he's saying, I think he's talking about. Oh no, you're right. I'm stupid. Yeah, you're right. Continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, like I like I couldn't draw a line of sight with my skirmisher in the back through my other skirmishers in the front. So a lot of times I would, I would say I got three that I can see or I got mm-hmm. four. Um, it was pretty rare because my guys were usually in like kind of weird formations. It was rare yeah. that I got like all five able to shoot um, unless they were just you know perpendicular or something like that. But I was trying to be good about that. I, you know, like if it was in any gray area, I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna shoot three because. I was hitting on like fives or sixes anyway, just fishing for poisons, fishing for sixes. Okay. Um, but yeah, with that, um, with that panic one, I just kind of get a little bit ahead here. Terror is uh, really strong, really good. In this terror edition. is very good. I, mean, I know you had an issue with that. One of my opponents had an issue with some terror. Um, I did fix it though. Like I'd found the easy fix to get rid of it and not have to worry about it. So if I nice. didn't have to take that terror check, ooh, <laughs> man, because like, then that Lich Priest on Dragon is dead. But, you know, yep. it is what it is. Um, okay, so this is an interesting one, uh, which popped up in Steve's Mountain Miniature 1, um, or Mountain Games. Uh, mm-hmm. was, does Plague of Rust affect your ward save? And we, Technically, yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. Technically, so rules yes. is written. Totally, there's an argument there because of some questionable word choices, um, which they got to FAQ and do it some way. But as a community, we all kind of were looking at it and going, no, nope. all the attacks are basically going to be AP2. And that's that's the easy that. fix. Instead of having to change armor value into armor save and all those other wording, just yeah. say all attacks against the enemy unit get AP2. And that's that's the easiest fix. And as old heads, I guess you can say, we've played other editions where we, heard, we see Plague of Rust, we hear Plague of Rust, we know, oh, it's just minus two to their armor. You know, right. like, we know what that means mm-hmm. in a fantasy setting but somebody coming in new might go plague of rust just says it reduces their armor value right also regen and ward save so that's gonna it's gonna need to get little adjustments there okay so the next one it's this one's funky do you a hundred percent does, does random can... movement let you move around the front arc of an enemy unit to get charges in the flank or rear because yeah. nowhere for random movement do you have to go straight. It used to be where you would pivot on your center and go that direction straight. So then you would hit either the front side or whatever actual arc you're in of a unit. But now it allows you to wheel and then you could get into the flank of someone and then you make contact in the flank of an enemy. So rules as written, I would say yes, you can get charges in the flank of a rear flank or rear of a unit even if you start in their front or if you start in their side, you can get to the rear, whatever. Um, It seems very gamey. I don't like it, uh, but I don't know if that's what they intended because that's clearly how it's written. I want somebody to roll triple sixes with a hell pit and just 
Tail her hard around the back. <laughs> I, I just want to see it happen. Just, just for just, just Tokyo for fun, Drift. You know? Yeah, just for fun. Tokyo Drift. I don't know if anyone's ever going to do it or try to do it because, you know, all the wheeling and stuff you got to pay for. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it would be so funny if it happens. True Armageddon, um, which is weird about random movement. So if you roll a number you don't really like, you can't spin in place. But you can just wheel if you have enough room to do circles. Mm-hmm. If you don't mm-hmm. like the number you rolled, you can. It's just like normal movement. You can move it just like uh, if you rolled a twelve. You have twelve inches of movement. Nothing says you can't just wheel in place, like a little spin top. Which, yeah, uh, they mess that up so bad. Yeah, and like doing. if if someone does that against me, no one's done that. But like if someone does sure. that, I, mean, I can't really call them out on it because I'm like, I would laugh. Say, it's yeah, like it, it doesn't say is, you. What are we doing? Yeah, like what are we playing here? The old one was pick a direction, roll your mm-hmm. dice. Pew, that's the way you're going. What was this the one, one we were just talking about? Sorry. Uh, the help it. The help it. Um, there was a rule that wasn't written down that we were talking about. Oh, the remember? challenge. When does oh, yeah. the challenge end? Yeah. When does a challenge end? All right. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to answer that yet. We're going to have to. No, uh, yeah, we'll just. I think I, th- I, as- I assume it's going to be it lasts the whole round of combat. I feel like that's what most people want it to be. Um, and that's probably what it's going to end up as. I'm just going to leave it as that, and then we can discuss it later, but I'm guessing that's what it's going to be. Todd mentioned um, the Brett Virtues on mounts, which I don't know if that's in the rules to keep in mind, mm. but that's kind of one of those open-ended ones where uh, is it one or is it both? We, I mean, we, we definitely know it's going to affect one of them, and you can kind of choose if it, uh, that's the way it goes, or it could be both. Because uh, right now it kind of says... Uh, like it say model. It just says model, right? It says D3 attacks could be added to the model. Oh, that, um, that one. So it's like it's not really sure if you're if you can pick the rider or the mount or both same but, with the killing blow or but both get killing hatred blow monsters or... yeah rules is written they both get hatred and rules is written they both get um killing monster blow and slayer. monster slayer yeah if they take yeah. that other virtue because yeah. it just says the model a lot of other things would like clarify but i think it's just bretonians there might be us it was either an orc or it was a um might have been a beastman thing that had something similar not a fan of Monster Slayer on a little uh, a little dork Pegasus or something like that, but hey. That's, that's a royal is. Pegasus to you, royal sir. Pegasus. <laughs> royal Pegasus for the lady. Uh, okay, so any other? Do y'all have any others that come up here? Um, any other options? Any other rules that could pop up? So Tokyo I, I Drift, mean, the Mangler Squirt. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Actually, that'd be funny. It's like um, one, one of them sits and is like, and like, and it's like a bola. That's a bola, right? It's like that weapon, the bola. You like swing. Yeah, through it, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, the the one in the back gets plus one movement because it's drifting behind the other <laughs> one. You know? like, yeah, that'd be clever. So when we were driving back too from uh, mm-hmm. North Carolina, we were talking about like all the different kind of rules that we learned uh. that we thought we might know that kind of thing. And we, I mean, my mindset was even like I kind of like an FAQ kind of ruling instead of comp, which we can get into later, but like, instead of, you know, saying, all right, this is the comp that we're going to do or whatever, just almost having like a universal set of rules that we all agree on that, uh, that are kind of in that maybe gray area, um, which we can get into in a minute, but, um, that's fine. I, I, I don't want to, the- I have no, pro- we're going to talk about comp because we're going to talk Richmond yeah. open comp and talk Nova open comp, talk about, which is, you know, things are going to change. But uh, he said, um, what'd you say? Uh, Armageddon, you said, Killing Blow on a Necrosphinx can technically apply to all of its attacks? How the hell do you figure that? So I'm looking at that right now. I thought and... the Necrosphinx did have that stuff on all of its attacks. And it was nope. just a scorpion that had the tail attack Mm-mm. or something. Uh, where is the... No, it's this one. There it is. So I'm trying to see... How do you figure it applies to all of their attacks? Because it says in combat, this model may choose to make. Nope, wrong one. Oh, I'm on a War Sphinx. Haha, that'll do it. Necro Sphinx. Necro Sphinx. This model make one additional attack each turn with this weapon. So I don't. Like, it has Killing Blow on its regular ones. But it doesn't have Monster Slayer on its other ones, so just curious 
Is there something else that I'm missing? It can attack. It can at attack all attacks with decapitating strike because it's technically a weapon. Um, no, it's, it's literally telling you no, you may make I... one addition. Oh. Oh, God. I see what they're saying here. All so, right, bring, bring, bring me up to speed because I'm missing it. Okay. So, can you see it? I, I have a... Yeah, I can see okay. it. I'm looking at what you're looking at. I'm so, just since, not following the train. Okay. So, when you select with a weapon, what kind of attack do you want to swing with your weapon? Uh -huh. Like, think of the uh, Mace of Hellstrom, right? Uh -huh. uh, how uh -huh. it has two attacks. And let me let us... Let them see your faces a little bit. There you go, boys. Uh, I'll zoom in here. Hold on. Okay. So you get to choose, like, which of the maces of Hellstrom you get to use, right? You either get to do, like, the regular attacks, or you get to do, like, the one smash, right? Sure. So he's, I think what they're trying to say is the Cleaving Blade and the Capitan Strike are just two different weapon profiles that they can choose to use. And then on the notes of the bottom one, it says you can make one additional attack. So it's not saying I'll have to read like I need to read in the rule book where it talks about like weapon weapons and stuff. But that's sure. I think where he's leading okay, with that. Okay. I'm not sure so, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying yeah, he's so leading with that. Back up. So um, then it's saying you can roll like what? How many attacks do they have? Five. So he's saying you yeah. can make six attacks with sure. that one. So just to kind of compare it to the dragons, right? Um or the dragon? Okay. Things like that, where it basically says you have these claws, you can make five attacks with your claws, mm -hmm. and then it has one of your attacks has to be a bite that does multiple wounds and armor bane and that kind of thing. No, it says um, one additional, right? Hold on. Is do they have it? I don't know if the Tomb King one has it. I know exactly what you're saying, but in that case, this guy is saying that you can do the same thing here, but with the dragon attack. So you could have them all as the bite. Same with the great eagle, I guess, because one of theirs is like a beak thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, this is there bone dragon? No, there bone no they don't have a. They don't have that. No, you got me. But you got me curious. I'm pulling it up. No, I'm. I'm uh, give me another. Was it? Uh, I think just great eagle, right? Great eagle, forest dragon, chaos dragon, all those. Uh, yeah. So great eagle. He's saying. And I, I, I see what he's saying, but I have to look in the rule book mm -hmm. to see. So it's saying they have all their regular attacks or strength at their strength minus two AP, but they could also choose this profile as their strength and AP and then use all of their attacks and make one additional with that one. So you could roll um, four attacks at the Serrated Maul. I don't think... Okay, uh, I see how the wording's different. Yeah. Top, this model must make one of its attacks, whereas the other one is basically says there's an additional attack that you could do with this. Yeah. Um, now that's just probably wording of just like, <sighs> is it meant to have all your attacks at that plus an additional one? Probably not. But I, I get, I, I get, it. I'm following now. I was thinking of like the dragon profile. When yeah. I was, I was like, no, that's not how it reads. Armageddon, why did you have to point out another <laughs> rule that needs to be clarified? Uh, uh. Thank you. Appreciate that. Because some people will try and argue that. You know? And if you're in a tournament, uh, there might not be enough time to call over a judge and be like, hey, is this right? Is this wrong? So, uh, let's just, I'm going to write, um, let's just say, um, extra weapon, no. Weapon profile attacks from eagles, dragons, <laughs> Necro's it's basically the, the, the wording on the Necro Sphinx has it. Yeah. yeah. Or just fix that. Okay. It might be in the rule book somewhere, but I'm going to have to look that up later. Okay, so we're going to have to switch back to the FAQ. Do, 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 do. Nope, FAQ. Okay. So now we're back here, and we can look at some rules to keep in mind. I'll tell you what, that first one... You blew my mind with that one because I think we were. <laughs> I don't remember if we were sitting around or if we were no, already we're, driving back. We're, no, we're just, on the way. Yeah, we're on the way. And I think you said something like, um, "Vanguard units can charge." I'm like, no, I can't get out of here. I would have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, "No, seriously." Like, I was because I was like, "Why would you, would you take the Vanguard banner?" On I was like, the, wh "Where's the Vanguard banner?" Yeah, I was like, "Because you can't charge." And I was like, oh, no. like that see, one blew my mind. Seeing like ten Wild Riders. Vanguard, and then you get first turn and charge. Woo, man, that would be gross. So. Or just even five, but you know, it's it's not even expensive. I think it's like a 20, 25 point banner. 
you know. And then I was thinking about all like the little warhounds, cast warhounds or dogs and vampire counts or gyrocopters, whatever mm-hmm. can vanguard. I'm like, yep, you're just gonna get right in there if you really wanted to. Really want to. Uh, so units flee around a passable terrain. They don't flee through it. They have to go by the shortest distance. Uh, you can't cast magic missiles or vortex spells after marching. Oh, back to the uh, fleeing around a passable terrain. Give me that- five, Lou. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so that one's a little funky because if you have to flee around in passable terrain, if there's an instance where if this is the impassable terrain and your unit's here, uh, can I do a top down? There you go. Impassable terrain, unit like flees here and they're like an inch away from it. How do you move around the terrain if you can't? Are you just stuck or is your unit allowed to turn and then wheel around like this? Because if you flee an inch away and that's like your movement, are you stuck? Or there was a game, I think, when Jonesy was playing Christian. Um, it was the Empire vs. Orcs that I put up, I think, a couple weeks ago, where a Demigriff unit rolled high enough to keep going past the terrain. So with that, they were able to start the wheel to go around it. But if you roll well enough, are you just stuck there for the rest of the game? It's, unless you rally, it's kind of wonky. Um, let's see, what are y'all talking about? I don't endorse the reading posted, but it's a possible one. Blah, blah, blah. My dragon. Pat Gray said, it can attack all attacks with decapitating strike because it's technically a weapon. Yeah, so it's oh, that's going to have to be clarified too. Yeah, so Todd, it says you get one additional attack, but nowhere does it say you can't just choose to attack with that weapon. I think that's where they're going with that. I know if you... If you, I think if you read rules as intended, you would think it gets one attack at Decapitating Strike, and then it does all the rest of attacks with the AP 1, one right? And that's, that's what you think it should be, but based on GW writing, uh, it's hard to tell. Okay, so welcome back, Zach. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was just listening. Didn't want to interrupt you. Okay, so yeah, no, the fine. units fleeing can't cast while marching, right? That was pretty. For yep. me, that was pretty clear because I was having to keep rules. an eye on that. Yeah, I was having to keep an eye on that one with my own wizards. Mm-hmm. Um, so I made sure I drilled that in my mind. It's there. You want to read the next one? Um, so the extra die from Swift Stride may be added to the result, meaning you get to see the result before you choose to add it for charges, flees, and pursuits. Ha ha, Todd. <laughs> Uh, hang which... on. I'm di- I'm digesting this one. Okay. The extra die from Swift Stride may be added to the result, meaning you get to see the result before you choose to add it for charges. Yeah. So, like, if you're charging with a Swift Stride unit, you roll the two d six, and then you don't, and then you may add the extra d six for Swift Stride. You don't have to. We talked about this earlier. Right. Okay. 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 I wanted to make sure it wasn't you get to roll all three dice and then decide if you're dropping one or something. No, like no, I, no, they, no. My brain was like, wait, I thought it was you had just throw, throw your 2d6. Gotcha. Then you decide to drop it or not. Yeah. 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 Uh, next one. If an enemy decides to flee, this one was shocking when it was showed to me, and I was not expecting this. This one's crazy. Y'all should pay attention to this one. So, this yeah. one is huge. If an enemy decides to flee as a charge reaction, and you like don't make the charge because they got so far away, the charger does not count as a failed charge, and the charge the charger goes their full distance. So if you flee and you're like, let's say you're 25 inches away or whatever it is now. So if I roll, uh, if my movement's seven and I roll a three and a five, I take the five, and let's say I add the swift stride. So let's say I get another four. So nine plus seven is 16. I go the full 16 freaking inches. I don't just go the highest of the dice, which is crazy to me. I was not expecting that. Um, now, does that also really... apply for oh. a failed terror check? No, it specifically says a it's flea a reaction. reaction. And I think that's so, under unusual. Uh, it's one of those I'm gonna, like. I'm going to pull up um, the terror rule because I'm wondering if the terror rule says they must immediately choose a flea reaction if mm. they fail that test. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of like gets you back into it. Like, oh, you might be right. That you like might be right. Recursive language or whatever you call it. Like, um, you might be right. You might be right. Uh, let's check. It's like so like oddball stuff. I think that's yes. where this one. So, is. so that never came up for any of my games. Um, oddball stuff. 
I never failed any charges with any fleas or any terrors because I was able to redirect that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could see where this would be important for, you know, getting stuff a little bit closer instead of those failed charges. <clears throat> uh, Armageddon, yes, there is a controversy on that as well. We will get to that one in a second. Oh, Todd actually pulled it up. He said it must flee if the test has failed. Yeah, but it must flee is different from like decides to flee. I think depending, I'll have to like a flee charge reaction. Nope, yeah. I totally get you. Yeah, one's yeah. like a reaction, one's like a terror reaction, which is different. Yep. Uh, I'm going to definitely take a look at that one. I will find it. Hold on. There it is. Nope, that's not it. Uh,. Order. And this was the first GT for most of us. Um, right. So when we're kind of getting into these rules, it was like we thought we had a good grasp on the nuances, but then stuff kept popping up and it was like, you know, okay, okay. Like I can see where there's some more play in some of these uh some of these things. For for better and worse, you know, there's some rules like the Necro Sphinx that I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey Zeus. Um if anyone shows a page number, page 129. Is that what it is? So it does say oh, if the I'm test has failed, it must flee. If the test is passed, it can declare its charge reaction normally. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, there it is. Um, uh, redirecting charge. When a charge is redirected, the original charge is not the oh, wrong spot. The target of the redirect charge does not have stand. Nope. There it is. Okay. If the once the charge target has completed its flee move, the charging unit makes a charge move as normal. If the charging unit makes contact with the flee... Damn it, am I... Where the fuck is it? Hold on, let me read the whole thing. This is in the case where you can't redirect, because redirect there it is. is if the charging better. unit does not make contact with the fleeing unit, it moves forward its full charge range. It has not made a failed charge. The charge target ran away. So it just says it's completed its flea move. It doesn't. It does not say um, charge reaction, or like flea reaction mm -hmm. to the charge. So it would include uh, the terror. So if an enemy decides to flee the charge reaction, or flees from a failed terror check. You know, someone's gonna ask that too. <laughs> that's, yeah. like, that's why it's good to have this kind of. <laughs> Almost like a running dock for the rules to keep in mind. Nice mm -hmm. to know. Like if you if you were to read one thing before you go play round one, yes. or you're on the way to an event, the rules to keep in mind is definitely definitely a good one to just have. And what I think we want to do, I think we should start putting page numbers in here too. That would be that would be good just for uh, documentation purposes. You know, if somebody wants yeah. to argue you, <laughs> then we can start numbering shit too or stuff. All right, so while you're doing that, so strike first and strike last don't stack. You either have the you either have the rule or you don't. And if you have both, they cancel each other out. Makes sense, right? Yep, that does because uh, I think there's enchanting aura for chaos that basically give you always strike last. And if you have strike first, then you are normal, your initiative. Nope, that makes perfect sense to me. I think Todd and I had that happen. And he was good with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, like, I like that. It, it seems pretty intuitive, but just just in case anybody, um, you know, a little bit of confusion with that one. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one, I know there was confusion with. Um, totally was, legal. If cannons can shoot into combat. Totally legal. I don't play an army with cannons. I don't know much about war machines, but uh, shooting into combat always seemed kind of weird. But the way kind of folks were describing it was... I'm not shooting at that unit. Yeah. I'm shooting at that blade of grass right there that just happens to be 10 inches in front of that unit. Hmm, <laughs> there whatever. just happens to be a path <laughs> where I might hit some. I mean, technically, I think you could even hit your own unit. Like, yeah, if yeah. you so, choose if you choose the point and you want to hit your own unit, you could even hit your own unit, which is crazy to me, too. So I understand the argument for... I'm shooting into combat because like, I mean like okay on brand it makes sense for Skaven to shoot into combat because they just don't care they're just like whatever I'm going to shoot my own stuff into combat whatever happens happens you know Empire, Petonia you don't want to shoot that stuff into combat right? You're like, no 
It's busted but, though. It's like that's a good counter towards dragons though, because the wool. Like if you're looking at Empire, what do they have to counter dragons? Demigriffs, um, cannons, and the cannons. That's that's legitimately it. But it's hard to get demigriffs there because they fly twenty. So it's just like, so oh, your does, demigriffs are close. Run away. Here's something interesting. The way my mind works is when you're in a challenge, you have like this protective bubble around you. Nothing else can kind of hit you. If my dragon is in a challenge with, you know, a little <laughs> Empire swordsman dork guy, whatever. Okay. Can a cannon hit my dragon in a challenge? Well, let me ask this. So the FAQ no, does no, the on. FAQ does talk about shooting at like lone characters, uh, and that's clarified. Uh, you can only hit the lone character if you like perfectly hit it. We can we can read through the FAQ that it, it talks about it, but the only way that swordsman is in a challenge still. Is that somehow your dragon didn't kill the like the swordmaster champion? So, in that case, if he doesn't kill him, then he probably deserves to get hit by a cannonball. <laughs> if like your five hundred point yeah, dragon no, I'm, lord, I'm okay with. I'm okay can't with that, kill yeah. a swordsman. No, but put him, put him down. Um, hold on, let me pull up the uh, GW FAQ. I got it here. Hold on. FAQ. So if we pull, let's go. What was this one? That I, did, I do That's like uh, Armageddon Bounds comment. After accounting for misfire saves and no bounces, it takes on average 13 cannon shots to kill a tanky Chaos Lord on a dragon. Yeah. I, I'm not sure of the numbers on that. I can tell you it takes four to kill a Wood Elf dragon. <laughs> <laughs> That's In one fair. turn, it takes four shots, and he is poof. He is gone. <laughs> it's down here. Okay. So I'll zoom into this one pretty far for y'all. Um, and that's with my enchanted shield actually saving one of the shots. So really, it's okay. just three, three, three successful shots. Hit when he took him down. Uh, Todd said it did eight to his, but he did not have the regen. So yeah. like when you're down to two wounds on a dragon, whew, rough. Okay, so question. Cannon do not directly target, probably should, does not. Cannons do not, no, it does. That's fine. Cannon do not directly target enemy models. They target a point on the ground. How does this work with targeting lone characters? Can a cannon be fired in such a way as to hit a lone character that it would normally be protected from shooting by their proximity to a friendly unit? The purpose of the targeting lone characters rule is to protect characters from enemy shooting, even from shooting that does not follow the usual rules, though it does not protect them from templates. Therefore, and in the spirit of the rule, unless they are the closest target to the cannon, an enemy character that is within three inches of a friendly unit that contains five or more models of the same troop type cannot be struck by a cannonball, even if their base lies directly under the path of the Bowson cannonball. However, if a lone character's base lies directly underneath the strike point of a cannonball, they are hit. So before the bounce, if it just lands on them, then they are hit. But that is only talking about lone characters. That has nothing to do with, like, a dragon in combat or a steam tank in combat or just some random unit of anything that's in combat that is just talking about sniping characters away. So or if you're 10 inches <clears throat> in front of the wood, yeah, you know, like, so if you wanted to protect your character, you'd have to hide him 10 inches from the front of the wood. Cause that's the closest point they can see. No yes. further than 10 inches because they could roll a 10 and then they hit your character directly. So, yeah, so it has to be, you have to be further than 10 inches back. Because the, the the bouncing one doesn't hit just that initial strike point, so you have to be eleven inches. Away. No, if you're a lone character. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes. So. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. But yeah, if I you're if you're my, a dragon, I mean, I lost my wizard you're gonna get hit. Too. Oh, really? God, that sucks. Because I lost my yeah, I lost my dragon to the initial volley of cannonballs, and then so the next gamey. turn I lost my wizard. So uh, gamey. <laughs> and and people are like, cannons aren't very good. I'm like, y'all are y'all don't realize that they are still. Chris Kyle with his 50 cal sniper rifle just <laughs> headshot. <laughs> like they still get there. Uh, so no. I did like that they added this. Uh, can y'all see the whole thing? There it is. Can okay. a cannon target a point on the ground if woods or a hill line between it and that point? No, a cannon cannot. So now this is where I'm confused too. It says a cannon cannot shoot over woods or hills, even if it is uh, on the hill. However, a stone thrower can because it fires indirectly. So does that mean you can only, even if you bounce or go over the hill, it stops at the woods or the hill? Or does it just mean you can't, you know what I mean? Like I know exactly what you mean. They because, didn't even um, answer the question fully. The way it was being played <clears throat> that I could tell was that if you could only see the front of the hill or the front of the woods, 
that's the point that you had to target because you couldn't see anything past it. So you yeah. would hit, pick that point, and then if you rolled a ten, you it would then over. shoot ten. <clears throat> but I don't know if the but you see, should go that ten. Yeah, I, because yeah, I yeah, it sure. says a cannon can't shoot shoot over woods or hills. Does that mean it can't target over the woods or hills? But you can't see on the other side of those woods and hills anyways to target it because they block line of sight. So doesn't that mean if you can't shoot over it or that means you the bounce doesn't even go? That's and what how I me, read it as. Give me the slope of that hill, all right? We'll calculate how far <laughs> up that cannonball goes and yes. it's gonna off the battlefield. Yes. Change the degree. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh yeah, that's see, and that's why it's just it makes sense just to say cannons can't shoot into combat or just a universal rule of like your vision <laughs> point can't go any farther than what you can see, but maybe you can bounce. Like whatever folks tend to I don't know, getting folks to agree on anything is yeah, tough. Plus, yeah. just whatever the TOs are, you know. I think that a, a cannon should not be able to shoot through woods. A cannon should not be able to shoot through a hill. Um, and a cannon should not be able to uh, bounce through a woods or bounce over a hill. Um, so, it's, um, but it technically. It depends on the angle of the hill, because, you know, you're right. It could just hit in a weird way and still keep rolling. It's it's wonky. And, and without being too, like, too try-hard or too sweaty, right? Like, obviously, our, our bases aren't completely accurate, because, you know, sure, we're nothing due to the expander trays. Um, War Machines are no longer on, like, those circle bases. Now they're on, like, maybe, like, a rectangle for cannons. Right. Um, so hypothetically, if you were to put all those cannons on your back rank. Um, oh, you're going about this, huh? Okay. Yeah, because, like, I don't know. and I, Maybe someone has a thought about it. So, like, if you put all your cannons on the back rank, and they're on all the like, back right, of your deployment zone. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. If you're on the back of your deployment yeah. zone. Right. Up against the edge. Got it. Up against terrain, even on either side or something like that. And um, you have to... I, I need to read the war machine rules again. You have, to, you have to pivot to face your target. What if some of your pivoting takes your base off the... <clears throat> back of the board or you so, bump into your own unit remember like, like, you can wheel through your own unit except as long as your the front of your base doesn't like clip the unit so if like uh i learned and oh, that'll be that's right that's right that was the later yes talk we had. Okay. yeah so you can spin you can wheel through your own units but you can't have the front of your base go through your unit so like your ass can spin yeah. and go through and it's fine so, as long as it doesn't end inside, right? Yeah, yeah. as long as it doesn't end. Um, so then for War Machines, do you rotate them all at the same time to shoot that way so that they don't end in, inside of each other? You know? uh, well, I mean, you could pivot on your center, and that'd be fine. Like, you could just... Yeah. Because yeah, okay, okay. The, but then you would then have to face, like, if you had two next to each other, one would literally have to spin, like, fully 90 degrees. It couldn't do, like, a 45 or something. What we I did, because my good. brain just wasn't working, because they were on circle bases... Yeah, and like I was like, what we did, so my my brain just didn't work. I was like, can we just like put like a little space between yeah. all these war machines so that they have like a little room to pivot? You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, I can't, just, my brain is breaking right now. It's it's I'm very like... it's very weird how you can railroad yourself in this edition. Um, because I've had several games where let's just say two chariots charge the same unit, they win combat, whatever, whatever. They're they're nut to butt. They're right next yep. to each other. Yep. You win combat. Who cares if they overrun or not? You can then not reform and have one facing like you can't do this because if their center sticks the same, you can't do this. So you have to literally hope you have to hope that one overruns and one can restrain and then you can right. start spinning because if you don't, they get stuck like this. You can't reform and go this way. You can't reform and go this way because then your ass is stuck in your unit. So it's like you could either face this way or you face this way. That's literally that's all you can do so we had um, a situation in weird. my bretonia game where my dragon and wild riders overran into the flank of a lance or like yeah it was kind of the flank of a lance and they had to yeah. kind of turn it we got we got some bretonia players all to congregate together and figure out how the lance thingy works because they were well read on it so they all kind of like moved the lance a little bit to like make it like a real looking flank okay and i was just like if this is what you guys think, I'm okay with it because I don't know anything about land yeah. formation. But I was like, eh. it, there was like a bunch of scholars together. Like, <laughs> everyone's looking to through the books. It's like, hmm, hmm. But what's yeah, the information those, that we all seek? Right. <laughs> like, like yeah. land formation for me is one of those things where I learned that the 
line of sight is from like the second rank of the lance. Um, yes. That. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, oh man, it was even about deploying the lance or something about that, where you can't deploy them in lance formation. No. Oh man, what was that? I think you're talking about the last rank. If you yes. don't have a full, like, if you only have, let's say, if you, if you have a unit of five, you have you can only have one, one, two, and then the other two have to be next to each other. You can't have, like, you can't have the back corners be like this. You can't have the Nobody, the rear no empty. Yeah. You yeah, can, yeah. The the only way that can happen is if it's filled and you start losing casualties, and then you can have the two on the edge. But if you just deploy them, nowhere does it say that you start like that. They have to start like this, and then you have. Ch- two and then the one so it's kind of wonky it's almost like you're hiding a character in there too it's like a lone character in the back of your lance that's not really in the unit just kind of <laughs> nestled up in there oh, nice. um, page 118 gives you the ability to nudge apart let me check and to kind of go with that also uh because right next to it is don't you don't have to maintain one inch apart from your own models that kind of goes with right what we were talking about and i learned that when i was playing against todd's warriors um i usually don't call people out for stuff like that uh, like, oh, you have to be one inch apart. Um, but I noticed, like, Todd was like placing stuff like certain ways, and I think we talked about that. I was like, I was like, is that a? Did you mean to do that? He's like, oh yeah, like you don't have to do it anymore. I said, like, really? I was like, okay. Yeah, that happened to me. It might have been my first game. I was like, you don't have to do that anymore. Or it was one of the games, and I was like, yeah, you don't got to, you don't have to do it anymore. And it's surprising. So, uh, this is perfectly acceptable for Friday that the enemy was stage one of two. But you can't get yourself in more trouble because if one thing panics, maybe more things panic because they're not closer together. So, <laughs> so Todd, that it's not about your. Um, I don't know if you meant to meant it which way, but no, because that that one inch rule only covers enemy models that you have to nudge apart. Nowhere does it talk about. Um, let me pull it up. Is it this one uh, here? The one inch rule only talks about nudging. Um, at times, once movement is complete, players have may have to nudge units further apart by the smallest amount possible to, to maintain this rule. But that's the old, the rule is only about um, enemy models, so uh, you do not get to nudge yourself apart, uh, which is weird. Yes, you have to maintain one inch from enemies. Not yeah, just own. just enemies. Yeah. Yep. So it's yeah, that would be nice if like after the after combat's over you bump an inch apart so then you actually can reform and stuff, but nope. No, no. Not today. Okay, so back to rules in mind. Let's go... Um, we, I skipped the Vortex one. Okay, um, and this one... Someone also asked... Um, so Vortexes can hit units in combat, and it's based on whichever direction they go. So it's you would treat the Vortex as if it was actually moving on that thing, and only those units get hit. So... Uh, it could hit both units. It could hit one or none. Uh, they only hit units they pass over, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, maximizing double charges will make this a semicolon, a semi-common issue too. Yes, 100%, because your units will get stuck together. Sometimes, just depends on the basis. But uh, I can't remember those, who talked about it. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, those vortexes, they bounce out when they're done because they don't end. Yeah. Um, inside the units, and you can't right. actually cast a vortex on top of somebody yep. unless it specifically says that, yep. uh, which I learned right before Brawlers because I was playing that wrong against Vampire Tales. But enemy units can end, like your units can end on a vortex, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they won't take damage from it until the vortex actually moves. Until the scattered um, phase. Yep. So someone mentioned that, I don't remember who it was, it might have been Armageddon again. That there is a uh, complication in terms of what if the vortex rolls a direct hit? Does it actually move anywhere? So nowhere does it talk about that it always goes where the arrow is pointing. So um, in some instances, people think, and it could be true, that the vortex stays where it is. My brain says I thought I saw somewhere where I followed the arrow on the... uh, That's just for like bombardment, I think. But... I can't confirm. I've, I've I've been playing it that way that it moves in whatever direction those on the hit. <clears throat> yeah, um, that's that's how we've been playing too yeah. because that just makes sense. It's like a vortex. It's not like mm-hmm. your wizard is not trying to hold it where it is unless they want to, I guess. But you don't really get to decide. So I feel like it should always move. Um, but we're gonna have to. I'll add that up here. Yeah, that makes sense. I Dude, I got a couple vortex. templates that I want to make sure I'm not screwing it up. 
Uh, stay put if they roll a direct hit, or do they still move the d6 per the arrow? <laughs> Does that the... apply to a fanatic? That is a great question. Oh, gosh. Because <laughs> uh... fanatics scatter, and templates Does scatter. This... <laughs> Also you know, apply yeah. to the fanatic. That would, um, I mean, I'd be okay with that because fanatics are way too good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Questions, questions. So it looks like there's a one in here that there might be some debate about still, uh, where it has the all ranks can shoot at a large target, not just the front mm. or half from the volley fire. I, yes. I was, um, I learned that at brawlers because I have a large target and folks were doing the back rank shooting because it says all models can draw line of sight to it therefore they can shoot um but there's some little bit back and forth that's been going on so yeah. i'd be interested to see what some folks that do a little bit deeper diving come up with on this one but uh i'm kind of i'm I mean, fine either way um i my gut leans into you should be able to shoot at the large target because you can see it but i understand where the counter argument is where it's like no only the front rank and volley fire gives you access to well, half of the back i posted um i took uh someone's who was it uh where was it who was talking about it? i think it was jacob it was jacob yes yeah he put he posted up a nice uh so jacob posted a thing if you check line of sight under check line of sight actually i'll just pull that up so we can all look at mm -hmm. it together. Uh, that would be here. That would be here. And like, it's so like, um, when you're having those kind of discussions with folks, uh, it's nice to have the rules kind of referenced in your argument so that people can just kind of read through it and kind of follow your train of thought. Cause that's the best way to get somebody on your side is yeah. then being able to follow like a nice clear path yep. of logic. And don't be um, a dick guys. Like clearly <laughs> like, I think I probably have a hundred games already with like under my belt in least in terms of like encompassing everyone that I talk to at least a hundred. So it's like, chill out. We clearly don't know the rules. There's a ton of gray area. If you're solidified, like, no, this is the way it is. This is clear. Shut the up. <laughs> you clearly don't know because sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're wrong. I don't care who it is. I don't care uh, how expert you are, what, how long you've been streaming. Like even me clearly, because I get rules wrong still, and I was this so is a confident. brand new game. Like I was so I was, confident. Uh. Yeah, I was so confident when you were talking about vanguards can't charge. <laughs> I was like, "You're losing it." Like, yeah, they cannot charge. They can't <laughs> charge. I'm like, no. There's nothing that says they can't. Only it, and it specifically says scout can't. And someone uh -huh. actually asked a question earlier about the beastmen. Um, I'll have to go back to it. Oh yeah, yeah the I'll scout. Get that one. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. So if you look under check line of sight. This is the paragraph that matters down here. Normally, only models in the front rank of a unit can shoot. However, sometimes the rules will allow models in the rear ranks to shoot. In such cases, models in the rear ranks are able to see what the model at the front of the file can see. So, this could just be referencing volley fire, or it could be talking about how, when you're checking line of sight, you don't... Um, I guess, is that the only thing? When I saw that, I was thinking, There's something else too. are there any other rules that grant extra shooting? And the kind of response was hills and volley fire give you those extra ranks right. or, you know, the, the half ranks. Um, and in my head, I was thinking, well, maybe large target gives you access to that. But it doesn't specifically say, like, the hills and the volley fire, extra units can that can draw a line of sight can also shoot mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't like, explicitly say it. Um, I kind of, and other people that taught me that role where you know making extrapolating that argument and I, I was following them um and i of course had the large target so, and i was like you know makes sense Fine, yeah shoot at me. so they're trying to argue that like some people are saying well that that's talking about volley fire but then if you look under large target uh is this the one Hold on. there we go uh, enemy models never suffer to hit penalties for blah 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 in addition a model can draw a line of sight to a model with a special rule over or through other models and vice versa. So does this rule supersede the, like, you can only shoot in two ranks? Or, like, you can only well, shoot in one rank? Or yeah, like so, it's, so that's what it says. Uh, it basically says 
only it says typically only models in the front rank can fire is right. kind of what the, the shooting rule says yeah um, and i think there's a hidden sentence in there that talks about because of line of sight um or there's a hint at line of sight in there which i think that's how this argument kind of gets going as well now there's no yeah. line of sight issues so i can shoot right exactly you know? right exactly <laughs> so and it's it's a legit argument so uh, uh, gw we need an um, faq please so yeah, like that that's one where it's on here but i am open to either interpretation like the rest yep. of these were kind of like okay but this one i'm definitely open for either side you have uh, to stay at that you have to stay at where your mindset is you have to stay at you're open to either or <laughs> because which it, it could go either way so if you're just like no it's this way because yeah. you think it's this way then you could be wrong Right. Um, yeah, of course. I was. I mean, I'm definitely wrong about a lot of stuff because it's funny. No, no, no. I'm not saying. Me, I'm not saying you. I just mean well, like I'm the person you, who. I'm definitely uh, wrong. No, I'm saying folks, the person who was like, "It's this way," could be wrong. Sure, sure, right, sure. That's what I'm saying. And there's a couple times where folks were putting out an idea, and I'm like, "No, that is definitely not the intention." Mm-hmm. Uh, like a rust, right? Where I'm like, "That is definitely not how this is gonna go." <laughs> Uh, I, I understand where we're going, but no. I agree, we sneaky. Turn that car around. I agree, sneaky. Um, okay, so this uh, Beastman one, I scrolled up for that one. You can give okay. a Beastman character both Vanguard and Scouts. I take this to mean they can deploy outside of 12 inches of the enemy, which is Scout, but then they get to make a Vanguard move. Can they charge? Um, I would say no because they scouted. Bingo. So scouts, you don't have to scout either. If you have the scout rule, well, I might be wrong on this one. I'm pretty sure I was right on this one, but I think scouts, you have the option to deploy them. Yeah, it says mess. Yeah. So you have the option to deploy them. So what you could do is not deploy them as scouts, just vanguard them forward and charge. Mm -hmm. That could could be a thing. Mm -hmm. And under the rule scouts, it says if deployed in this way, scouts cannot declare charge during the first turn. So if you deploy them as a scout, you can't charge. And it's funny because my brain was like, you don't have to deploy the scouts that way. I'm like, true. is that actually true? Because you know, like you start doubting yourself, and you're like, uh oh, mm-hmm. some stuff's changed. Some you know, funky words get thrown in there. And I agree, sneaky. Like, like the special rule of large target should supersede the rule of check line of sight. So, like, I think you should be able to shoot with the whole unit. I think but that's just sneaky. Me. Avocado is my dwarf one opponent. Oh, really? Who taught me this rule? Oh, nice. Okay. So I, I think that's how we kind of got down the chain of it. Well, so. then when we start going through your uh, <laughs> game and you start talking shit about how um, he was a, as a player, then he can he can fight you back on this. This is good. Absolutely. No, we had a, he we did had a, say yes. Had a great time. He did say yes. <laughs> so rule in my favor or I cheated. Ha ha. Okay. No, it, it was, we, we, we had the conversation and I was like, you know what? That makes sense. Throw him. Throw it was Rangers, I think it was Rangers with quarrelers. I was like, throw them at me. Okay, so um, a unit even slightly obscured has cover minus one to be hit. If obscured yeah. by over fifty percent, then it has full cover. So if you're yeah. just one little toe is obscured or like not being able to be seen, you get the whole unit like, gets minus one to hit. I like don't cover. like that. And I hate it, but I gave it to my opponents all day long, all, all right. weekend long. I was giving people all kinds of cover and uh was giving people full cover or partial cover yeah, yeah full cover um in the end i was fishing for sixes anyway so mm-hmm. i was like you know no no big deal but no i was definitely handing out cover left and right and, well it's, uh, it just hurts shooting even it. more when they do that like it. shooting is already so nerfed i'm surprised that they yeah they wrote um, it like that but it's so now like if you have your little skirmishers in front um they're getting it if your pegasus unit is you know one is outside the block, and then the two are behind impassable terrain. That's your minus two. This group gets minus three because it's oh no, not minus three. No, their unit games. strength. Yeah, the too high yeah. unit strength. Oh, that Either could way, probably be awesome. in here too. Um, let's see. Uh, hold on. What was that? For a <laughs> skirmish <laughs> unit to be minus one to be hit, they need to be unit strength one. Yep. Blade riders, horses, skirmish, Pegasus. Flying yep. horses that are skirmish, you know, they, they don't get it. Swarms, anything. They do not get minus one to be hit. You have to be basically regular infantry or war beast if, if there are any war beasts that are skirmishers. I don't know if there are. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, let's see. We got behemoth unit strength is based on starting wounds, not current ones. 
Um, which makes sense when you say it, but I think Army's project was a little different. I think Army's project was what your current ones are, so I think it's a little bit of uh, some sure. mixing of uh, additions there, but mm -hmm. you just get into the habit of whatever your starting ones are, that's your unit strength. So gross. Um, all behemoths have lumbering, which gets you to that thing earlier with you get the plus one for close order mm -hmm. um, for events that are you know running at this and way. you can just move and you get a free 90 degree pivot at the end of your move if you don't march so that's pretty good yes yes that is true it's pretty good pretty good and fast cab has even if you march you get your pivot at the end even if you march all right keep, um, keep on going if you pass a terror chest terror test you get charged <laughs> you still take a fear test in combat if the enemy outnumbers you um we had this last night with our game we were watching the bretonians versus mm -hmm. skaven mm -hmm. um yeah so if a terror target is charging you you take the terror check if you are charging a terror target you don't have to take that terror test on the way in you just have to take the well your test you'd have to take a fear check on the way in so there if you charge a fear causing enemy doesn't say anything if you call if you charge a fear causing enemy that has more unit strength than you, you have to take a fear test to even charge that unit. Yes. Let me just make sure that I'm thinking about that the right way. Models with this. No, nope, that's terror. I'm like positive you're right. I just want to do it. For I'm so right, and there's no refuting it. I don't care what the rules say. Yeah, so no. I could be wrong, but I believe that's what it is. So the funny part is that I never have higher unit strength than my opponents. So this stuff never comes up. So that's why I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I read it in there, but I never get to do it. So I'm not. <laughs> All right. So where is fear in here? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's a big paragraph. Okay. So if we wish to declare as a charge against an enemy that has fear, higher unit strength, take that leadership check. If it's failed, can't do it. Um, cool. So that's exactly what we talked about. And then once you're in combat, and they have unit strength higher. That's yes. when you're taking your fear test in combat. Um, so basically, if they minus have minus one to hit, yeah, minus yeah. one to hit type. If they have if they have higher unit strength than you, you have to and you don't cause fear and you're not ITP. You will have to take a fear check when to charge them, and then you have to take a fear check in combat. So it's like a double whammy if they outnumber you because is that is insane. one check per phase, right? And you're doing it in your movement phase. <laughs> um. Yep, movement phase charge, and then movement combat. Phase and then your mm -hmm. combat phase. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Yep. All right. Uh, when you fail there. a terror test, you flee, independent of models remaining. Yep. Yes, because I guess there's that thing as you know, if you flee but you have more than fifty percent, you just fall back in good order. Yeah, and that'll be that is down here, which mm -hmm. we'll get to a little bit. I tried to organize these a little bit in terms of like where they affected stuff. Um, oh, God. I'm reading the next one already. Sorry, oh, jumped ahead. No, no, no. Uh, having it. terror does not make you immune to psychology unless you have that listed as a special rule. Isn't you that can weird? Panic. That's no, so it's, weird. I mean, it's, it's I get crazy it. because uh, I had a unit of wild riders that were fireballed off the board, and my general one dragon that causes terror was. Um, oh, no. Not concerned about it. I was concerned having to roll two dice for it. You sure. know, like that's why I was concerned. I I'm, was like, really? You're like, okay, well, we're, we're, we're taking this. Okay, I got it. And I'm telling got you, it. they're trying to make it like the old world, or sorry, like Total War. Um, obviously, you wouldn't run if a unit gets killed next to you, but your leadership would drop in that yep. game because, like, your like army, you know, has dropped or whatever. But I like it, but it it sucks. You have to be very careful with your movement because if you have a lot of like chaff. And you don't want to fly your dragon or whatever you have too close in case that unit flees from a certain unit. And then that unit flees through you. And there could be one Chaos Warhound that f flees through your dragon. Oh, yeah. All right, here's a leadership check. Leadership My, 10 is cool and all until you roll an 11. Yeah. Or leadership 9. Like <laughs> Leadership 9 is cool enough until you roll a 10. And it's like, oh, cool. My one little 5 point or six point warhound made my 600 some point mm -hmm. dragon run away it's crazy so that's why we have frenzy banners for certain things yes yes okay. exactly okay um yep so that has the you take one panic test per phase and one fear test per turn there's no limit on terror tests okay hang on now i'm thinking think away sir there's one fear test per turn goes against what we just were talking about with Fear test on the way in versus fear test for hitting. Uh, yawning. Pardon me. Pardon me. You follow what I was saying there? 
Sorry, I, I yawned. I figured. So uh, not because of you. <laughs> <laughs> we just were talking about how uh, um, you can take a fear test in the movement phase for the charging in, plus taking a fear test for the hitting in combat. This one here says one fear test per turn. Yep. So we're gonna have to. I'm gonna there... take a look at the page number for the panic and fear test, and just make sure that this one here is accurate. Okay. And I really That's can't stand. I can't stand how if the winning side of a combat includes one or more units that cause terror, each unit that belongs to the losing side must apply a minus one modifier to its leadership test when making a break test, which is crazy because it's um, if you look up um, terror, which I'm at. Hold on, cause terror. Blah, blah, blah. Nowhere does it say. So That's models with. Yeah, models with the fear special rule cause terror. Models that cause terror are immune to terror. A terror unit does not cause terror, does not become immune to terror when joined by characters. So, um, terror on terror, you do terror on terror, you do not have to take, in my opinion, the minus one modifier. But if you're ITP, uh, it just says you're immune to like this. It doesn't say you're immune to, oops, if I can highlight it correctly doesn't say immune to this so even if you're itp you still going to be minus one on your break check so i'm not right can y'all confirm that correct that, right, correct that that is how it reads and uh i'm a little bit so if my wild riders they lose frenzy they're no longer immune to psychology um yeah. so they immediately See? have to take that minus one which totally makes sense but for the units that actually have the terror it doesn't seem to See, so under itp it says you automatically pass the fear, panic, and terror test. Doesn't say you don't suffer the modifier to your leadership, which is bananas. But I think it's, I, I think it's it silly. It but you know, if that's if that's what it is, it's what it is. You know, it's like, yep, it's what it is. Um, I see Todd say a unit only needs to make one fear test per turn. Models that cause fear are immune. Yep, a unit that does not cause fear does not become immune. Yep, okay, so a model needs to take one fear test per turn. So if you pass it on the way in, if um, the thing outnumbers you, you charge in, you pass your fear check, that first round of combat, you don't have to take your minus one to hit. So why did no one say anything when we posted that list about the terror before? I didn't write that one. I'm not sure who wrote that one, but I mm -hmm. just took it off the Brawler Bash Discord, so it's good that we can get rid of that now but in a subsequent turn you would have to because uh you're no longer having to take um you know what oh what am i doing what page is that 168 i guess because i guess in the subsequent turn that terror thing is going to charge you and you're taking a terror check and you have to take a fear check in combat oh no so this is right yeah no no this is right yeah because you take it yeah okay so this is correct this doesn't have to get removed because it's a you take a terror check if I charge you. If you don't run and I hit, make combat with you, you're now taking a fear test. So yeah, we. So it's correct. It's correct. Ignore me. Yeah. Ignore me. What we were talking about was if the if they... fear if they're if yes. you are charging a fear cause an enemy that number you. Yeah, that's my mistake. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's too it's, many rules in my head right now. Some someone else is gonna have that happen, and yep. they're gonna think those two dorks were talking about it. They said I didn't have to. Well, if they kept listening for another like two minutes, then they would have uh, figured it out, and we'd be right. Uh, okay. okay. So we got that one. If a friendly <laughs> unit flees through you, you always take a panic test, even if less than unit strength five. Yes, except if they were a lone character. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, where's this one? Um, so right under the panic one. test per phase. Okay. So, unless a, well, hold on. You all, do you always hold on? Do you not take a panic check when a skirmisher? Does a flea reaction through you, or what if they're just like running, running? Is it only a charge reaction flea, or is it just running through you at all? Uh, uh, I will tell you. Except for a lone character, except for skirmishers and lone um, characters. skirmishers can be fled through just like any other unit. Skirmishers and panic. Skirmishers cause panic in friendly skirmishers if they flee through them as normal. However, skirmishers do not cause panic in formed friendly units 
closed, open order, and so on that they flee through. So if you're a skirmisher, you don't cause panic as you're running through other stuff. No matter what, except except if you're they're running through another skirmisher. Okay. Which I actually didn't know. I didn't know skirmishers can panic other skirmishers. I should know that because I've lost skirmishers. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. That's, that's good. Okay. That's good to know. All right. But yeah, the lone character piece. Uh, if you are unit strength one character, you are in skirmish formation, so you do not cause panic to anything you're running through, except other skirmishers. Hey Todd, I need you to do that. Um. Uh, the packet for note for Richmond Open, because I want to get that as soon as possible. So we have the we have the packet for the Richmond Open ready, but like with the changes, so like. If we need to get that done as soon as possible, because I've already had a couple people, like several people, message me, and one of the guys who's like running Richmond Open, like, "Hey, is the packet done?" So we need to get that done like as soon as possible. Of course, it's done. You didn't uh, get it. I sent it yesterday. Yeah. 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 yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean. Okay. So if uh, an yeah, enemy yeah. falls back in good order and you pursue and make contact, he counters charging in the next round of combat. Yep. Yes, that is true. Yep. Yep. And you have to go. You still have to go more than three inches for your devastating charge, impact, impact hits, hits, that kind of that thing. Stuff. Yeah, so yep. so that is another one too. Impact hits, you have to go that three <clears throat> inches. That um mm-hmm. that was displayed a couple times. Oh um, yeah, I'll put that in here. It's impact hits, and is that it? Um, furious charge is oh, three yeah. inches also. You only get impact hits and furious charge if you charge. charge you go three inches, inches basically. Um. Somebody was asking about counter charge because that's a funky one sometimes, and uh, I mm. kind of was just telling him, "Don't worry about counter charging if the enemy is within their movement because he can't do it." And that kind of eliminated all questions that he had because <laughs> he was like, "Can I, can I counter charge this?" I'm like, "If they're close, no." That's true. Uh, okay, so if a friendly unit six inches away falls back in good order or breaks, you take a panic check. That unit is five unit strength five, or if the unit flees through a friendly unit. Oh, hold on. Uh... Todd, you sent him the packet, but did you? He asked for like the, like the things in red changed. So then I think it made it easier for the girl to like, or whoever the artist is to like edit stuff. So I guess that's all I'm asking, if like that's been changed and whatever. Okay, sorry. What did you say? Uh, if a friendly unit six inches away falls back in good order or breaks, you take a panic check if that unit is unit strength five or more, or if that okay. unit flees through you, unless it's a skirmisher and blah blah blah. Yeah, at so least the second part. That that seems and, and that seems normal for eighth edition folks that are used to that. Um, folks next to you break or run, you're considering breaking and running too. So that that's on brand. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, when you fail a panic test and have more than fifty percent of the starting models, you don't actually run like an order edition. So you just fall back in good order. I like that um, a lot. Yeah. Like well, I don't like it for my shooting when I shoot at stuff, but I like it sure. just, you know, in general. It seems reasonable that yes. you, you, you planked off 25% or something and the whole unit's going to run because, you know, a couple dorks in the back. Right. Yeah, I got it. Um, uh, I got it. Units that fall back yeah. in good order or give ground off the board are destroyed. Bye. So if you wind blast someone and their base is within their back edge, their base is within two inches of the of the table, they are destroyed. Uh, a hilarious enough. story from that first round of combat. There was a gyrocopter that was in combat with six archers for the entire game, and we yeah. were literally just bumping each other back and forth two inches. Nice. And uh, I needed to win one more combat in a row to bump his gyrocopter off the board. <laughs> <laughs> and we just kept laughing as we we're rolling these dice. We're like, "Come on, baby, bump him off." <laughs> so crazy. Uh, I guess we already did this one, right? This is already talked about a couple mm-hmm. above, so we can get rid of that. Okay. Well, that is um, all here, of the rules you know to keep in mind. Here's is an there... interesting one, too. Uh, things that are unbreakable still give ground and get bumped back that two inches. Sure. Um, things that can't move, like an anvil. Yeah, they still like, get ground, too. I would assume so. Like, I, I, tra- I was treating it like unbreakable. Like, you still kind of bump them two inches. Um, but yeah, just one of those weird corner cases that yep. happen to come up because, you know. They, they do give ground. Course. That is true. And even war machines, and they can even pursue, but they pursue at like minus one movement or something like that. You know, I didn't even think weird. about wind blasting war machines off the back of the board. Yep. 
It's pretty didn't, nice. Didn't even cross my mind. I was too worried about cannonballs flying at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm an so, air. I'm an airbender. And I, I, I like having this document here just because it's like if you were to read one thing right before you walk into you know playing a game, this is a good set of things to to just read if you're mm-hmm. like. Okay, cool. I got a, I got a good feel for what's going on. Yep. Um, and what we we're eventually is we're gonna make this like we can just make this available for everyone, but obviously just so they can't edit it, but they could like, um, view it because like that would help everybody, right? Like they should be able to view the, this and be able to. The way Ken ran it at Brawlers was, um, you know, he had a Discord for the event, which was cool because mm-hmm. a lot of folks could hop in there and start, you know, discussing stuff. He actually posted this and kind of pinned it so that folks that were sitting at a table could just boom, get right to the pin and just scroll through. Well, this was um, also, pr- this part right here was actually printed on like the last page of the packet. Just so you know. Most people didn't. <laughs> most people didn't. Most people didn't read the packet, which is fine because, you know, it's, people just having fun. There's carnage system. They're going to kill stuff. There's no carnage! Just, yeah, you just get One for the boy god. Yeah, I get it. Um, okay, so that's, we're done here. Good job. Good job, everybody. We went through that. Uh, let's see. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need these. Okay, so if you want, we can go through your, um, does anyone else have any questions or any other, I probably should do that before we close. Is there any other question? How do you reckon doom wheels work? That's interesting. Can they shoot each player's turn and can they shoot into combat? I don't, I don't know doom wheels well, that well. I was going to say, I'm not really sure on Doom Wheels, so... Let's look would... up a Doom Wheel. You got to pull it up? Okay, good. I'm going to find it. <sighs> doom Wheels. We were just talking with the Skaven player yesterday about his rattling guns um, and how they shoot multi-barreled. Um, he didn't run any Doom Wheels. I don't think there was two or two helpets, no, because there wasn't Doom Wheels. Two helpets are so good. That will be the meta. That will be two help it's is gross and it will be it will be the thing. Pardon me for So heavy chariot. Uh claws and fangs? What? There we go. Okay. Oh that's the rats. Okay, I was like, what do we do wheel? Doom wheel, 145 points. Random movement three D six, so it can easily charge in flanks and stuff, because it's gross. Uh any stomp attacks, AP one. Any unit that suffers impact hits, that doesn't even say wounds. It just says suffer. Imp- so if you just take an impact hit, doesn't even have to do damage. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You have to take a leadership it test. You. If yeah. it touches you, yeah. You become disrupted until the end of the current phase. That's pretty cool. Okay. Zap! At, At the end of every shooting phase, it is very clearly says end of every shooting phase. So I'm mm-hmm. just going to say both without even reading the rest of this. I would but, agree, uh, yep. After all shooting has been resolved, place up to three small three-inch blast templates so that their central hole is within blah, blah, blah. Once placed, you're going to scatter, blah, blah, blah. Friend or foe. Anybody is going to get bla- risk getting blasted by it. Um, AP2, if it misfired. I mean, it's more chance for it to blow yeah. up, so fine. Yeah, no, I would I, say and- every single shooting phase. Can't control it. It has to do it. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't even say may place up to three blasts. It says place up to do three it. blast markers. Now, you could just place one if you wanted to. But the, remember that that kind of reminds me of Total War. If, if when it's in combat and like doing its grinding and stuff, it's still like bzz, bzz, occasionally yeah. shooting off little lasers. So I'm in the camp of every shooting phase because the templates when they scatter, it is at the at every start of turn phase. So yeah. my start of turn, your start of turn, we'll do the scatter phase. Um, Changing weapons during FB, I go. Uh, F, yes, uh, Armageddon. It does. It counts as charging for the enemy unit or your unit that's charging counts as a new combat so you get to um uh, change weapons you can reform because you auto rally and you reform uh you get the impact hits you get all that stuff now i think it's only give ground where the challenge continues i don't know if fall back and go to order it also does the challenge continues but i know at least give ground does but it counts in my understanding it's a brand new combat uh If an anvil and casket of souls aren't on bases, how do their facings work for flanks and rear? Well, they count as skirmishers, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So you so actually you have to go it. directly at them at the lowest uh, movement that you can. So you can't wheel and try and get like a better angle. You literally have to go as directly as possible while maximizing. So Well, as soon as you touch them, they form up to you. And yeah. they mm-hmm. create that... Um, yep. 
line, the battle line that you're kind of thinking about. In your head. Yep. So they will close the door to you, which is funny, but like an Im- immovable object is able to close the door. But it is very cool. In one of the games I played, it's an immovable object, but nowhere does it say it can't be removed from the battlefield and then placed back. So the elemental spell, you can teleport, teleport that okay. immovable object. Like you can teleport the casket 12 inches away if someone's getting close. I've done it before and it's hilarious. Interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. I, I, I did it. That. I did it with the catapult, like the skull catapult. You teleport <laughs> twelve and just ba-doo, teleport twelve. Ba-doo. It's hilarious. Um, you're welcome. I'm all, I'm all for that. Yeah, like I anything like funky like that. Like as long as it's not oppressively game breaking. Like I like creative stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So more. Yeah, like the like the the help pit 3D6 into the rear. Do it. Do it if you can. Like <laughs> it's so. I, I, Whatever. Um, okay, so any other questions in regards to FAQ type questions or common rules that you don't know the answer to or that are gray area? Uh, I think that covers most of them. And because uh, I think where you're heading is a couple quick recaps of some games that we had. And yeah. I'm sure that we'll talk about some stuff that rules had happened or maybe we did wrong. Um, so feel free to also keep going. Because I know in my round one yep. opponent, we definitely played something wrong, and we had to fix it kind of quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Sneaky Avocado, now that you say that, that means that a War Machine and all that stuff, unless it specifically says you can't overrun, even they could overrun. Hmm, I have to look that up. Okay, weird. All right, let's go to... Uh, this is... Zach took a couple pictures per game for his re- day one. Um, didn't get any for day two, one because just didn't get in contact and didn't get him sent, and then just didn't take pictures for the uh, his last game. But here is his game one versus the Empire. Now, so, versus game two versus... Um, no, this is one. Dwarves? I, I, this is game This is game two. Is uh, it? Game one oh. had like a wintry theme on the board. I remember that. Oh, this one. So it's, but, or it's right here. Should be this one right here. Yes, this is game one. Yep. Oh, okay, so I'm on a little bit of the delay because I'm kind of peeking at your YouTube screen here. Yep. Uh, so this was... Oh, man, I don't remember his actual name. But Sneaky Avocado in chat, we we met up, we played here. He's got dwarves. Um, he's got a pretty thick group of rangers up front and some gyrocopters, a nice balanced list. Um, I don't even remember who went first, but uh, basically I'm thinking about just trying to grab as many points as I can without dying because all your characters are pretty beefy boys you know and i have t3 with not much armor um so let's see what the next slide is i think this is him doing his movement one. Oh, blue wants me to keep talking so i will keep talking um in the dwarf list there's rangers up front quarrelers there's iron drakes with the troll hammer which the troll hammer is really really good uh I think it's like strength eight or something like that. And my dragon ended up dying to one eventually in the second game. But um, my eagle in this game did not get in front of my wild riders as a pace card that I normally do. I don't even know where my eagle is. So if I took this picture late, maybe my eagle was already shot off the board. Oh, yeah, I was taking these pictures at the end of the room. Um, there was no cannons, no war machines. No organ guns in this list. And I remember we had some questions on the Rangers because they were, they could be skirmisher, but they didn't have to be deployed that way. And there was a lot of reforming um, with them, which was making sense because I ended up getting my dragon up the flank. And then they kind of reformed and were all able to shoot at the dragon. Um, the way my list was kind of built was slam my wild riders in to get as many points as possible. Um, if I can get my dragon in combat by like turn three, that's cool. Um, a lot of shooting that I had really wasn't doing that much. Uh, half poison archers, half armor piercing archers, not really the best mix. Um, my wizard ended up doing a lot of the damage with uh, fireball. Um, and elementalism, kind of doing the plague of rust, but 
real like I was really down and out on my list kind of going into it, but it feels like an all or nothing list. If my dragon can get into something good, I'm gonna have a good time. If I am running around chasing my tail with the dragon, I'm not gonna have a good time. Man, you're saying uh, dragons are good this edition? Wow. So, so the, the the running joke was I only got to play against one monster. And yeah, that's crazy. Top, my guy up top has a monster slaying sword, and I only got to play against one monster. So I played against. Sucked. Hold on, how many, did I, how many did I play against? Um, I think I played against eight. Hold on, I played against three. Here, you keep talking. I'll think of that. I'll yeah, the, the running joke was the dork on top of the dragon There's was basically two. there for just. Two. Basically just there for defense and just like a riding crop to just like get this dragon moving and get him into combat. He was he did absolutely nothing. Like his attacks were just pillows. Um, because I never got to fight, fight a monster. Um, so this is uh kind of after receiving some shooting um and moving up. Obviously, we've got the dragon kind of go up and get into combat, just taking his, all the shots that he can throw at it. Um I played verse seven. Seven monsters. I yep. wish I could against seven. Yep. I would have a better time. Played verse seven of them. Um, on the right hand side, you see a gyrocopter with a unit of archers. Um, that combat all goes on forever. Um, and this is me just trying to march dudes up. I got the eagle coming up, just trying to get closer. Uh, there is a gyrocopter on the left side that we found out. Well, sorry, I found out that. The protection that a lone character gives is only for shooting and templates and not. is not for charging and combat. <laughs> you thought it was for charging and combat? Uh, yeah. I, I was, so, how did you get fourth? So, the gyrocopter <laughs> charged my wizard, and I was or like, wait, fifth, that can happen. Um, luckily, the gyrocopter fluffed and the wizard lived. And wow. Yeah, we'll get to that. But yeah, so I, it was almost a real bad flub there. That's funny. Um, the big green orb that you see in the middle is my forest that I have been growing. Um, kind of turning it off when I'm shooting through it and then turning it on when uh, I'm trying to get some cover. Okay. It, it worked out pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. Pretty nice spell. I do like to grow in the forest. If you can hit me forward, Blue. Oh, yes. One second. Is that the wrong... It should be hold on. There we go. That, that, that was better. Um, so here we have the gyrocopter on the left in combat with my wizard getting supported. Wait, did I go back? Hold on. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, it's this one. Yep, sorry. You it'll pop up in a second. Yep. Thank you. So wizard in combat with the gyrocopter, luckily didn't die, supported by some archers on horses with a cavalry spear so they kind of gave him a little support the gyrocopter is still fighting on the right side versus archers uh trying to push him off the board so my dragon did get into combat with i think that was the king's unit um won the challenge versus the king and the rule that we messed up was I forget exactly what it was, but I basically was breaking on okay. the dragon because he had more than twice the unit strength of me and your fallback in good order turns into a flea if they outnumber you two to one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We did the math wrong. <laughs> it was like uh, off by one. Off by like one dwarf or whatever. Um, and wow. the reason why it was because like the shield bearers, I guess, was maybe like a four man block. So we kind of were miscounting a little bit. Um, okay. So we ended up, the dragon ended up like fleeing. Well, why is and it then we got the dragon back in there. Um, okay. So all, all we, we noticed it pretty quick. Um, I think but it's yeah, so this one now. that was pretty, that was pretty huge though, was if the dragon flees, I'm going to have a bad time. Sure. Instead of just kind of bumping that unit down. Um, I think this is a later picture where. Basically, the dragon reforms um, I'll check and is now second. targeting a second unit. And basically, everybody yeah. is just kind of condensing in. Um... There you go. Uh... Yeah, that combat is still going off on the right. We were laughing <laughs> That's the so whole time. Awesome. Yeah, the archers are just <laughs> sitting there throwing hands at this gyrocopter. Um, the, there's a big unit of iron drakes, and the ranger unit is actually still there, too. Um, 
and really it was it was tough to get any extra points without throwing my whole army away right. uh so obviously i'm trying to march up with what i can um i was hiding my wizard in the woods in between two units because i, I was that. like how how did that get charged <laughs> the other <laughs> turn so i'm just like stuffing him in there um my strategy did adapt throughout the games once I learned some of the ins and outs and rules. It's funny because the more games you get under your belt, the more you're going to learn. Of course. Um, but yeah, no, this was this was a good introduction game. Mm -hmm. um, we both had a lot of fun. Uh, I thought I lost a lot more units than I did, but then I realized that the wizard and the general stayed on board, so everything was you know kind of okay. Um, so this is your second game versus dwarves. Yeah, so and this the guy was... behind the guy in the kilt behind you is the another dwarf player, and I was playing versus that guy. So I was laughing because I was just funny. saying, I was like, "Is there any more dwarf players after this that I'm <laughs> playing?" Because I was like, "Am I done playing against dwarves?" Because this guy had never a, had a much difficult list for me to play against because okay. I had like four copters, an anvil, um, a big king, you know, like really really shooty heavy list. Um, so if you could actually go. These are out of order just a little bit. Let's yes, they definitely flip. are. Flip this one. Let's see. I got a little bit of a delay. One of these is the first. Uh, not that one. Well, your delay is not telling me. Oh no! Is it this one or the other one? None of these. There should be a unit of quarrelers in front of the dragon. Uh oh, here, right here. I think this is yeah. So I can I can kind of walk you through it. No, and, I got uh, it. As you're kind of shifting through pictures, you'll see it. So basically, the dragon. Yes, this is the first one. So the dragon was able to get up um pretty close on a fly twenty. So I was pretty stoked about that. Yeah, like dragons, they're OP, man. It's just I'm gonna fly twenty way over here, not give yeah. a crap. You don't have enough to shoot and kill me, and I'm just gonna be in your face. What are you gonna do? So I was super paranoid about this list because a lot of shooting. His entire list was all shooting. There was not one single unit of hammer, melee, thunderer, everything, or thunderers and the rifles. But I had to deploy kind of far back and figure out how I was going to piece together an attack. Uh, and but my only idea was to all his throw Sorry to interrupt. Dragon. Sorry yeah, to interrupt. All his, just one quick question. All his gyrocopters, what did they have? Steam guns. Oh, uh, they all had the steam gun? steam guns oh that's okay cool okay it's sorry really good versus t3 um yeah so i tried to play kind of safe and almost make like a if you move forward with these gyros i'm gonna kind of like get a good charge off um but i'm just gonna send the dragon in and just see what i can do mm -hmm. um so if you kind of skip forward so there is a unit of carlos right in front of the dragon i ended up charging them and they can't be the they, they terror check it. uh, uh that could be are they they basically uh, they they fail the terror check and they go. Yeah. And on, I think I try to redirect the dragon into the. It's got to be this one. Yeah. Okay. I try to redirect the dragon and fail. Mm. Um. So he just kind of stumbles forward a little bit, which may not have been the right rule. So um, that would be here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're good. So, and the whole time he's just shooting at me using some missiles. Okay. Um. So nothing really too crazy happens on his turn, uh, except he reforms his king unit. To face my dragon while it's kind of in that watery piece. So if you want to go to the screenshot where his guys are kind of facing my dragon in the water. This one? Okay. Um, I'll tell you in a second. Well, I thought you said you fell forward. It doesn't look like your dragon moved at all from the I, previous I, picture. I, I, I probably rolled garbage. Oh, but, okay. So this is where he kind of turned to face me. Well, see, this is what's interesting. If they fled, you don't count as a failed charge, so you would have gone... The D6 plus your swift stride. So you would have gone plus your movement. So you should have moved that guy like at least minimum his 10 inches forward, right? So if I redirect into the. Oh, you. Other, if I try to redirect into the other unit. And... Oh, sorry. I missed that part. Okay. You That's redirected fine. and failed. Okay. He still should have gone a little bit, but okay. All right. I'm listening. Right. So now we have his unit preparing to receive the charge, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and without going forward, basically what happens here, uh, I don't know if you can highlight with your mouse a little bit. So the dragon yeah. declares the charge on the big unit in the water. Okay. Uh, fails the terror check. Um, rolls, re-rolls it. I don't even remember why he re-rolled it. Uh, I don't know if it was a dwarf thing. I don't think BSB's can. But basically re-rolled it and failed again. Okay. Um, and so he has to flee. And so he basically pops through. Oh my gosh! Unit of unit of iron drakes is right Ugh. behind him. Okay. Second unit of iron drakes right behind him. Ugh. Then there's an anvil unit right behind him. 
and then it's um off the board there, I think. Or maybe hmm. yeah, yeah, I think it's off the board right where the guy's tilt is kind of thing. Like, what is I'm looking at the anvil picture. Is that what are those two little guys by themselves next to the anvil? Those are I think engineer. No, no those could be engineers. I guess he's runesmiths. Runesmiths? What are, are they runesmiths? Okay. I think that might be runesmiths. Okay. I was going to uh, say, if they're just like the crew of the anvil, then he could land. But that, if that's not the anvil, then yeah, you couldn't you couldn't land right there. Or his unit. That sucks. Yeah, so basically what happened is uh, there's a big movement tray, and we moved the movement tray. And uh, like the one guy was like hanging off. And I was like, don't worry, you're good. Like, <laughs> you're you're not off the board with this gigantic unit that has a lot of points in it. Like, right. it's fine. The one guy's hanging off. But then we didn't move the um, guys on the edge of the movement tray there's two guys hanging off on either side of the movement tray and once we move them over then it was like all right like they're actually off like mm. I, I gotta i gotta do it sometime so yeah that's fair yeah once that happened um and that's game I, right I, there basically i, 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 I praised the guy because he kept it together like yeah. emotionally because you know it sucks he's losing all that mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so at that point i basically was like all right i'm taking all my t3 no armor stuff and just marching it forward and just trying to get as many points as can while you know not worrying about steam guns and whatever i was like you're sure. gonna collect points so if you just kind of flip through forward a little bit you'll see my guys just basically death marching forward um so that's right after the unit died and you i think you start to move up after this yeah you know, yeah it's got to be uh um, that was the last picture you actually sent me the one oh, where the okay, unit's okay. dead that's the only that's the last picture you have you probably felt bad and you didn't want to keep taking pictures and be like, no, oh, no, let me take a picture I, yeah. and you're dead. Cow. So the end of it was basically it. the dragon got into combat with the anvil and like ends up pushing the anvil like off the board. Um, my dragon ended up Did dying to a wow. troll hammer torpedo. Did it really? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it died to a troll hammer torpedo because there was only a champion left in the unit, basically. That's cool. Um, but no, like he actually got a good amount of points for the game um, considering oh. everything. Okay. Um, again, with the carding system, you're not rewarded for basically like point denying your opponent, yeah. and, like hiding in a corner. You're basically rewarded for just throwing elbows at the other guy. So I just was like, here, let's do it. All right, so, um, right. okay. so next game is Todd. Todd's Warriors of Chaos. They were a super well painted, like Arctic themed. I think this is the um, first picture you have from it. So the first picture is right here. Back one. It's the first one I have. Yep. So this one is. Uh, this is not the first one. Actually, it might be it's the first one you sent me. Uh, okay. You only okay. sent me okay. four. That's right, because I was at the bottom of turn one. Is what I sent you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so basically, Todd marched forward, went first with all of his stuff. Sure. Uh, he has this giant juggernaut block with a dragon, chosen warriors, chaos warriors, Wood chaos is. knights. Yeah, like I'm trying to get the names right on everything. But yeah, um, he literally has like one of all that stuff. It's kind of funny. Yeah, and then he has a cool little chaos uh, giant on the left, mm -hmm. and then a dragon ogre on the right. Um, mm -hmm. So what I did was, so he marched up, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to limit test. I'm going to see what my dudes can do. Uh, so I charged my wild riders into the chaos giant on the left-hand side. It looks like did they're fleeing. I see an arrow nothing. Down. Yeah, Did absolutely nothing. Uh, yeah. And then they turned around and walked away. Uh, so you can tell how, how well that went. Um, I slammed some wild riders into the chosen knights chaos knights on the left there was like maybe six of them in that unit oh is that the unity countercharged with yes then the chosen so, chosen knights. so there. my wild riders the actual riders whiffed heavily on hits they did oh. um they did nothing and then okay. the two or three wounds that actually got through all of them actually wounded. He failed armor saves on, on oh, the two okay. that actually got through. So it was like, you know, only out, out of like the 18 attacks that I threw, <clears> two <throat> wounds or whatever, and both failed. So I Wait, was like, okay. Like, what's the strength? Of, what's this, what's your strength on the charge? Five, right? Five. So on average, you should get nine hits, and then you should get like four or five wounds. So you, you got half the average of number of wounds. Rough. But I probably ended up with probably where I should have been on the save wise once yeah, I saves them. Because they have a two up armor. And you're just AP one, two. Okay, so actually, you you averaged out with yep. him failing both his saves, so that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and then of course the two deer 
those four deer or whatever I have end mm-hmm. up getting two more two more kills through. Like just okay. just just the He's dumb complaining. Deer. Right. He's like right. well, yeah, I'm that's saying, pretty I'm like, good. the riders have pretty hunted good. nothing. Well not right. nothing. Like, you know, and then the deer do something and I'm like, okay, so they hold or whatever. That's um good. that's good. I end up just kind of like leaving my dragon off on the right to try to figure out what I'm gonna do with mm-hmm. his Stay away from and dragon yeah. marching dragon. up. I'm like, yeah. you know, trying to make it, you know, a little dicey on what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, plinking off shots with I can or where, where I can, putting up a forest so that his dragon can't charge my stuff all hiding behind the forest because gotcha. uh, he can't see. Just trying to, you know, be a little cagey. Um, my glade riders on the left are being NASCAR and just driving around the whole board on the left so with the reserve move, shoot, shoot and scoot. I did click to the next turn. I think this yep. is the next one. Okay. Um. So yeah, his chaos giant, you know, kills or flees those dudes. Um. On the left, my archers have no chance. So they actually just march forward <laughs> and they're just trying to get out of the way. Run away. Uh, wild riders die with those knights in the second round of combat because I'm now using hand weapons. Um. You just gave ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was one of those things where I was like, um. Actually, you know what? I think that unit of wild riders, that was my unit of like maybe eight or seven wild riders. So he actually did a lot of wounds to me. Oh. Um, I think I might have actually lost frenzy. But either way, okay. I knew they were toast because the mm-hmm. dragon basically um, charged them on the side and then reformed. I knew they were toast. I was okay. just trying to see how, what they could do. Sure. Um, my eagle kind of was a little bit of an MVP here, getting a flank charge on see the that. chosen folks who yeah. I was trying to tie him up as best I could because his wizard couldn't cast out of combat nice um, nice so yeah a little interesting um he rolled a one on the chaos gods with his wizard at the beginning yeah. of the game and he's like i'm gonna re-roll that and then never roll again on it <laughs> because i can't I have a stupid wizard or something right. like that yep but um, if you fail stupidity you can still cast spells which is weird yeah um his dragon was stacking up some good stats uh making me very afraid <laughs> so i think here I remember. Sorry, it looks like I, I can see it. It's plus so I, one I actually triple strength. charged. I triple charged that unit of warriors with my wild riders, dragon, and eagle, uh, because the wild riders had to go because they were frenzied. Okay. And I'm like, well, if they're going, the dragon might as well try too. And they failed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all failed fail forward except for the eagle. Oh, okay. Uh, and then if we go forward, I believe the dragon over charges the eagle, takes care of him. His dragon charges my wild riders. Okay. Takes care of them. You countercharged, then... right? Because I think they have countercharge. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't okay. matter. I'm not touching the dragon. I'm, I'm I touching. know. I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah, because yeah, I say yeah, I strike last. He does his things. Mm-hmm, um, so mm-hmm. the interesting part here is we actually get into a dragon combat dragon. Uh, where his dragon is attacking my dragon. Um, I do some wounds. He does some wounds. I'm losing, but he's a. F- I don't want to say he's afraid of Monster Slayer, but he's aware that my guy up top does have Monster Slayer. So he mm-hmm. backs me up two inches and then decides that I'm going to go clean up points elsewhere. Fair. Um, on the left side, my NASCAR uh, Glade Riders and stuff are just trying to plink off shots where they can. What's that um, in the center? Ca- is that that's just a Chaos Knight unit, right? No longer chosen right there. It looks like. Yeah. So the chosen, I took care of that unit because that was the bigger points one, and this one is okay. just a. Like 150, maybe. Of they they had a two up, three up, four up. I think were the saves on a lot of the stuff we were talking about. So these are the these uh, are the three up. Chosen guys. knights have a two up, six up, and these guys, chaos knights, they just have a three up. That's all they have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the chaos giant was also a lot of points were stashed there. So yep. I was trying Same. to do what I could, hanging mm-hmm. off what I could. Um, if you flip to the next one, I think his dragon mm. maws all of my arch dudes on the side. Yep. Looks like it. And I decide to go after his unit of warriors. Uh, we kind of just every the dragons were like, you know what? We'll meet later. We're gonna go take care of everything else. Okay. Um. Oh look, that's I can actually see my elbows. That's me sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, because you and you and Chuck or you and Peter were just like watching this. Game, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What is happening? Yep. Um. Yep. I tried to block line of sight for a rear charge of my dragon with the forest. Okay. Um, nice. Nice. Not really much else to do besides just trying to plink off random wounds here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, dodge what I can. Man, did all uh, your shooting only kill one of the Chaos yeah, Knights? I'm wow. Yeah, the shooting is just not great. Yeah. Uh, doing what I can. Um, 
I did notice the Chaos Hounds were still alive. Yeah, but... just chilling way over there on the left. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Because basically they vanguarded up turn one, and I moved my Glade Rider, shot, moved him again, and then just like drove past them. <laughs> yeah, and they aren't really moving. Hold on. I think, yeah, look, the previous turn they didn't move. The previous turn before that they didn't move. <laughs> they just were chilling, just like, you don't get these points. They're not going to munch a marker. It's funny because at the very end, we were just like, well, I guess we'll take 2,000 minus 40. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's this one. There you go. So, yeah, I think I broke the wizard unit with the the warriors, mm -hmm. um, and then his dragon came up. Basically, that's the last piece there beside the hounds, and um, we're, we're, getting in, we're getting busy for dragon combat version 2. Yeah. And I think I lose Dragon Combat version two. Yeah, you so didn't. You did not send me a picture of that one. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically, I lose Combat version two here, but then I plink off the last wound or two off of his dragon and mutual destruction. Um, so I end up getting more kill points for stuff on the board. But this scenario was reduce your opponent to like fifty percent unit strength. Oh, get breaking five hundred points. Yeah. So gotcha. Todd, Todd Break. broke me first right. by quite a margin <laughs> so he got so he got 500 points and then he still had a chance to break you so he got i think it's 250 no no so he right? broke me got 500 then i have a chance to break him for an additional 250 isn't that what i said you or did i just basically flip but two, yeah you flipped, you flipped it but okay okay okay. so i got a little bit of uh some consolation points um nice. but yeah this one was like super close i think todd even had it by a little bit um uh, because of uh well, now I don't, I don't I'm going to mention it. If Todd ran off the, if Todd decided to just overrun off the field, it would have been a much different game. But yes, still, so, with his dragon, so, I mean. yeah. So he would have to overrun off the board because this is what we decided was our last turn because of oh, time was it? Okay. constraint. Yeah. So okay. this was going to be the last turn. Um, so he would have not been on the board for me to shoot him off, basically. Right. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. That. that was your day one. That was day one, um, cool. and so going into day two, I was second to the Bretonian player who mm -hmm. was in first place by a good margin, um, who ended up winning the event. Yep. Um, top, I think third, and uh, quick, quick snapshot of the Bretonian round. We only got through like three rounds. It was a heavy movement phase. Uh, you only got through. Wait, you only got through three turns. Yeah. Heavy, heavy movement in phase. three. Wait, wait, wait. In three and a half hours, y'all got through three turns. Yes, heavy movement what? phase. How is that um, possible? I killed everything on the board, wow. minus the wizard, which was the objective, was killing the wizard. Sure, yeah, yeah. The peasant archers, which I refused to shoot at because <laughs> they're basically zombies, and I had <laughs> a principle of not shooting little zombies. It's fair, it's fair. Um, and then they're general i okay. did not get but everything else i got they killed pretty much everything okay oh sorry the only important part about this game was oh we got through three turns in the last 10 seconds of the game i gave away well, i don't want to say gave away but i is that lost. when you had like three minutes left and you did the turn four yeah, that could have been it. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, okay. so they were like, they were like, yeah, three minutes left, just do a quick turn. So I think like, we did get the fourth turn. I don't see how you do that, but okay. So basically, okay. they charged Pegasus into my wizard's unit. Okay. And I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fire and flee with okay. my Glade Riders. And um, they did not rally. Or what the fuck was it? Oh, no, the turn before, they had fire and fled, and I couldn't rally on my turn. Why? So they went off. They went off the board. You couldn't rally, or you failed to rally. I failed to rally. So oh, okay, to okay, gotcha. Failed gotcha. to rally. Wizard went off the board. They got five hundred for the wizard plus points. Oh, huge! So like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. And my wizards and my generals in a challenge with their dude. Okay. Their their person's got a killing blow heroism virtue virtue heroism. Sure. Yep. Uh, we're in a challenge. My guy's hard to hit. They roll four or five attacks. One hit. Okay. And. When they're rolling to a wound, they roll a six. So ah, rough. Immediately, monster slayer. My general's dead. An additional six hundred points plus oh, all that. So basically, it was like a fourteen hundred point swing, I guess. Yeah, fourteen hundred point swing. Um, the game ended up being super close even after all that. So like, I don't want to say I was like crushing, dominating, but like right. until that last little bit, 
it was it was a good wood elf victory and then it okay. flipped to uh, a, a close game. And your your dragon does not even have a ward save, right? So my dragon has a four up armor. Okay. And a you five keep, up here. I think you keep hitting your mic or something. Is that... Okay. Excited. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Continue. Sorry. I had a four up armor. Okay. And then I have a five up ward that oh, is usable one time. Oh, the charm shield. That's right. That's right. And I used that to try to get combat res for a combat where folks were going to break. Basically, I was going to lose by one, and I was like, mm. I don't want to have to test on these leaderships. I want you to break. Okay. It didn't matter because I failed the charm shield save anyway. So. Did the stuff break anyways? No, it didn't break, but oh, that's good. I had to roll it because my charm shield failed. But sure. Um, that's tough, that's, man. That, that was sucks. that's a tough decision because yeah. Roll it. Wait, do you have a dice with you right now? Of course he does. Roll it. If you roll a five up, your guy would not have been killing blood. <laughs> He's I gonna. Actually, I actually cleaned up all my deaths. Go like, get I one. My, we yeah, we will wait until you get a dice. We will wait. I will talk to you while I'm doing. Yes. Because I hope he rolls a five up and then he feels bad for using his charm shield. Uh, no. Fell on the ground. Hang on. So funny. Okay, so after this, we will talk about. Um, we can talk about two. the. Uh, you rolled a two. I don't believe you. I didn't know. you didn't show it. No one oh, believes him, right? Maybe. It was a five up, guys. It was a five up. I know it was. Yeah, it was. So, the Empire game, my last game, um, that was the the person's got three great cannons. I lost. I don't want to lose this dice. That's okay. square hammer dice. Oh, nice. Um, it was uh, three great cannons, one steam tank, and a wizard casting like tons of fire battle oh, magic. Real quick, real quick. Um, Todd made a good point. Do the. Uh, don't your Glade Riders, did you pay for Feigned Flight? That is not something you can pay for with Glade Riders. They don't have it? They just can get Fire and Flee? They can't get Feigned Flight? They get Fire and Flee. Okay, so they don't um, auto-rally. Gotcha. Good good call, though, Todd. Good so, call, though. I didn't have musicians in any of my units, and mm -hmm. now I have musicians in all of my units, because sure. Plus one my, good. my folks were having a really tough time rallying, and I was like, alright, this is no longer going to be a thing. I want mm -hmm. plus one. I'm, I'm tired of Yep. Kind of like you with yep. the frenzy banner. It's like, yep. no, we're not doing this. This is how we fix this. Yep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so, so guys, no 3D printed dice should be allowed just because it leaves the potential for questioning and scrutiny. So um, at the events that I'll be running, and uh, even at the Richmond Open, I will be bringing a, a Chessex cube dice of 24 dice. I think it's 24 in it. For every single person to use, um, not saying this guy was re had like funky dice, but 3D printed dice it just leaves the door open for people to do shenanigans. Obviously, not saying this guy did, but I'm just saying I found out. I was told later that he had 3D printed dice, and I was like, you can't do that because that is very easy to manipulate those dice while you're designing, while you're printing, where the weight is, all that kind of stuff. So. So if you're sitting... It should be self-explanatory. No yeah, 3D yeah. printed dice ever. Yeah. But. Just, I, I know which dice you're talking about. Because if I, when I was sitting there, because uh, I had the, what, what does uh, Steve call it? The chair of shame or whatever. I was sitting in the chair of shame uh, because my, my dragon got blown off the board turn one. Uh, oh, so yeah, I was yeah. sitting I was sitting down and I was just trying to pull it together. And I remember I had to keep standing up to see what the dice were because they were like, curved in a little bit because they're 3d printed so i remember i was okay. like i can't see what these dice are i gotta keep standing up to see what these are right um but yeah so i didn't get pictures of that one because again i was getting my butt kicked and sure. i was sad basically turn one empire goes first um i got my dragon behind some impassable terrain and um it was a building for, right uh it was the skull thing if you want to pull up the uh you have it right there the uh the, we actually played on table one again oh um, uh the skull so thing there's like a little skull thing on the right hand side of the picture you have up there. Uh, what? Which game was it? Right here. This day. Well, oh. it was this. It was that table. I played oh, exactly sorry. that table again. Okay, hold on. I'll find it. Hold on. Uh, this the snow one, right? No, no, no. It's the game three against Todd. Um, so you see oh. that little skull thingy on the right? Oh yeah, on the right down there. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dragon was basically behind that. Okay. Um. And these cannons were basically like, hey, so the steam tank shot first, 
because it was it drove up and then shot to the side. Okay. Steam tank hit. I think it was D three wounds. So I was like, cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know that hits. I took I took two or three wounds, whatever. Um, next three cannon shots were ten inches from the dragon or base of the dragon, whatever it was. You know, in front of the thingy, the terrain piece. And sure. Then it, like it bounced bounces into him. through there. Yeah, it bounces through there and hits him. Um, every single cannon hit. Uh, the s- third cannon, I used my enchanted shield. <laughs> okay. I was like, I actually saved it. I actually rolled a five up. That's I was good. Stoked. I That's was good. stoked about that. Nice. Um, and then the fourth cannon hit, and it was basically if you, if you get two wounds, my dragon's dead because I only yeah. has nine wounds. So like he did mm-hmm. four cannon shots. That one hit wounded. They you know see, it's ten inches every time. See, that's what I thought, Todd. See, so the bounce stops on a passable, so he can't. Uh, what's the FAQ say? It says uh, the woods or hill. Nowhere does it say it can't shoot over impassable. I think that's the problem. So in the FAQ, it says you can you target a point on the ground if a woods or hill lie in between that. No, a cannon cannot shoot over woods and hills. Doesn't say anything about a passable. So it, it's you know what it's like. You yeah. could unless it talks somewhere about in specifically in the rule book where it talks about cannons bouncing stops at a passable, which I hope it does because it should. But uh, so I if, had a good I had a good run, and so in my head I'm like oh yeah, you sure. know eventually I'm gonna run into the cannon list and the dragon's gonna go bye bye. So right in my head I'm like you had a good run there, buddy. <laughs> time to time to go off on the side in the sunset. So I took him off on the side. And um, and you still made it a close game. Yeah, I was I was proud of myself for keeping it together because um, next turn, actually, right before he blew my dragon off the board, he actually killed my unit of wild riders with a fireball, and I passed a panic check on my general. Nice. So that could have gone even worse. Um, so yeah, turn end of turn one, I'm down seven eight hundred points already. Um, so page yeah, two twenty seven. Yeah, if the cannonball oh, hits impassable, okay. hits impassable terrain. So that means, um, like the bounce, but it doesn't say like if you target like ten in front and it like the ball lands on the other side of impassable, then that's fine. Like its first hit, land, like the first time on the third light, then it's fine. But it can't hit before it and it bounce through it. Gotcha. So yeah, that was my basically all the cannonballs landed directly on the dragon's head for yeah. better sake. But okay, all, so with the ten inches, they all hit there. Gotcha. Um. He left his wizard a little bit. You see a little kind of like orc tower on the right hand side. Top right. Yeah. Up here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he left his wizard a little bit exposed because um, he was killing some wad riders down the flank. Okay. And I kind of I got a new laser pointer tool. Um, nice. So I kind of moved my wizard up within 24, mm-hmm. laser pointed it kind of right over there to the right. And I could see his wizard. And he had some knights behind the wizard. Okay. So basically, the wizard was the in the front, kind of the closest thing to my wizard as far as targeting wise okay um so what i did was i casted a fireball directly at the wizard did just enough wounds because he was t4 i think so he's just enough wounds to kill the wizard which was his general so i kind of came back a little bit um but there was a question actually we didn't talk about that in the faq which i don't know if we can maybe find a a good answer for it was uh my opponent was kind of wondering well i'm wondering he was kind of pushing for it but uh in that targeting section it says if a character is, how do I want to say that? If the know. character is not the closest thing to the thing that is shooting, you can't target it. Right. So there was a little bit of ambiguity to the way I was reading it was there's a unit providing protection. That's whatever was within three <laughs> inches for of your character. Yeah, that is specifically talk about in the FAQ. No, 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 not just for cannons, for anything. Just like shooting oh. anything in general. There's a unit that's providing protection to that lone character. Yeah, you can't target it. Of- can't shoot missiles at it. You can't shoot magic missiles at it. You can't but, sh- uh, unless it a, a template hits it. But that's basically if, it. If that lone character is the closest thing to what is being shot, then that protection goes away. Yeah, definitely. But there's a little bit of ambiguity in the wording of it because there was a steam tank that was closest to my wizard. Like, oh, you just meant not it. in your line of sight. It was just closest somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like closest proximity. But like to gotcha. me, I was thinking, well, that's not the unit that's providing the protection. So okay, I'm not really worried about it. And it could be the way. I mean, 
I think that I'm right, but I mean, I, I'm always open to hear other folks' interpretation. Rules it written, it might be the way you're saying it, but um, I'd have to read, I'd have to dig into that to actually be able Cause, to Because I'm thinking there's a unit providing protection. That's, sure. what, that's what's in three inches. And, you know, if that steam tank or whatever was providing the protection, then yeah. So there was a little bit of discussion there. Okay. Um, but, but basically, I'm way behind on points, trying to get whatever I can. Mm-hmm. I'm planking off shots left and right, trying to grind back and um i think you you and someone else were hanging out at the end where yeah it was table quarters we had to hold table quarters so i'm doing some unit strength math trying to figure out right if i can hold everything i keep hitting my mic um and then uh kind of old school eighth edition rules crept in my head where i was like if i shoot uh one more model from that unit it'll get cause a panic check right and that'll flee which means i get points for that and i get the table edge but not yep. realizing that um it was it's a just a fall unit, I think. it was just it was just going to be a fallback in good order it yes. wasn't going to be a flea flea yep. and as soon as we said that i was like oh i just did all that work for nothing yep <laughs> i remember i was like they're just gonna fbi go and it's yeah, like my, ah! my my brain was super fried at that point i was just like that was after uh, three and a half hour rounds is way yeah. too long but it was needed because a lot of the games went yeah. to that time yep right. um and then the only other point of note in that one was my wizard was behind some woods um but it was less than 10 inches from the front point of the woods so he was able to target the front point of the woods and then shoot 10 inches back and hit my wizard right on the head yeah um so well well, maybe not because maybe now and based on the faq you can't shoot over the hills or would so you might or I just you should have been safe 11 inches away from the front of a wood also <laughs> that, yeah. that's what i'm taking away from. but yeah no it was a <laughs> close game ended up getting tied for fourth or fifth if you want to be you know precise about it but no uh, the, well, good recap so yeah, now we're going to talk place, about oh, well, i'm gonna say first place was bretonia yep who i played second place was todd's warriors of chaos which i played third place was empire which i played yep and then i never got to play i think it's owen ian owen his yep. ogres. I never uh-huh. had to play them, but they look fantastic. Oh love, yeah, love there were a lot of pretty armies. I took, I took, I think I took pictures of like f- six different armies. I think, and I'll post those later. Um, I Do think you the pick of that dragon fight. Uh, you sent me one. I th- actually, I either took one or you sent me a picture of it. I'll <laughs> have to, I'll have to check. Um, oh, so for someone asked about tomb kings earlier. Tomb Kings are very strong because um, they can easily take two dragons and like two sphinxes. So they go leadership bomb for them is really disgusting. Um, lots of necromancy to have that bubble minus two leadership. And then they have the catapult, which can do another minus one leadership. And then they just make you take terror checks. They can have an almost unkillable king on the bone dragon with the making you like it has a can't remember its armor save but it, it at least has a uh five up ward and it makes you and has a five up regen and it makes you reroll to wound it so even if you have heroic killing blow you get that one six you got to reroll it oh so no. yeah they, it's the tomb king dragon is very tough to kill it doesn't do as much damage you can make you can build it to do damage but you can build it so it like does doesn't die and it can just regrow wounds and regrow wounds um so did the carnage system hurt that TK list? Because I don't think that was floating around near the top. It was kind of no. like yeah, mid yeah. top. Yeah, it was not carnage system. It's probably I don't know how you build that the Tomb Kings for a carnage system. Um, it does okay, uh, but it's it, it all really just depends on matchups and stuff. But I think Tomb Kings are really disgusting. Um, let's see. You can Todd build- says that he kept them down turn one. He kept them kept them underneath the water for. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, if you have another dragon, which just happens to just murder people, or if you have like a um, something else that can just kill and blow all the other monsters, I mean, yeah, you have like you can shut down the list. But let's see, ninety percent of the armies don't have something like that, so yeah. it just depends on matchups there. So they are really good unless they get paired into something that can just murder monsters, like the uh, the. Chaos Dragon can murder other monsters if you don't build it super tanky because with the Ogre Blade and then you just start getting all the buffs on top of yourself, like, you can just murder mm-hmm. Necrosphinx in one turn. Like, it's easily doable. Um, and you can even kill, like, the Lich Priest Dragon because that one's not that tough to kill. Uh, My plan was Monster Slayer, the big monsters, but now that you say that they, I'd have to re-roll it. 
Um, I guess the Tomb King one. Yep. My plan would not have worked, and I would have definitely lost. Versus yep. Because you, you're, you're wild. And they're unbreakable too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they, they would. Um, if you win by two, they might have, they might crumble two, but they usually the big characters have indomitable two. So even if you win by two, they crumble two less. So it's like you have to do a lot of wounds and flank and all that other stuff to really kill them. So they're they're tough. Uh, the archers are decent because you can get poison. Um, I don't really like the chariots. They're light chariots. They basically just bounce off of most things. Um, skirmish is cool. The horse archers are good because they're scouting. And I think they're they might have anger too. Right? Arrows always always there. hitting on fives. Which is uh, what you're normally going to hit it anyway with long range, maybe yep. moving and stuff like that. Like five up is what you're... Yep. But I don't care if you have light cover or anything. I'm always hitting yeah. on five. Yeah. So, but it's just strength three, so it's not amazing. It's good versus some stuff, but it's okay. Uh, but the leadership bomb is one of the nastiest things I think the Tomb Kings can do because they have all the terror causing stuff plus the bomb. Um, and Tomb Scorpions are extremely cheap for them to all, all their attacks to have Killing Blow and Monster Slayer. It's insane. I thought it was just um, the tail. Is it all of them? No, it's, they have four attacks with Monster Slayer and Killing Blow. Like their weapon skill, four, strength, five, toughness, five, only three wounds, but you can also summon them. So, like, you can fly your Ugh. dude forward, and on the next turn, if he's not dead, he can, like, if he's the priest guy, he can start summoning tomb scorpions up um, with the ambush rule based on beneath the sands, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so, you can do some really gross combos. Um, uh, but, okay, so the Richmond Open is on mm-hmm. May. Um, if it's like the first weekend of May. Yeah, it's May 4th and 5th. It's at the convention center. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's right next to King's Dominion in Virginia. I think it's 46 Meadow of 48. Am I, uh, does it show it here? It's probably here somewhere. Uh, Meadow but, Event Park in Doswell, Virginia. Thank you. Um, so it's, I think there's 46 of 48 players. We're going to have some badass trophies. I mean, we're going to have swords. Like, I'm going to tell people because it's going to be amazing. We're having engraved swords. It's going to be awesome. Um, trophies are going to be sick. Uh, but let's go to, you see, check in all that stuff. So this is the template. Oop, let me scroll it over a little bit. Uh, one second, ladies and gentlemen. And I have not read this, um, tournament pack yet, and I'm supposed to be making a list for this event. So I need to, I need to get involved in this. <laughs> there we <laughs> Figure go. out what, what we're doing. So here's the schedule. Y'all can look at that later. You don't need to see this whole bunch of prizes. Best overall. That's like the Renaissance man kind of thing. Um, it's going to have best combined scores of everything. No, that doesn't mean if you don't have the best sportsmanship, you can't get best general and still get a prize. So many people on the internet are like, blah, 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 blah. But they don't read They don't read the packets. They just think whatever. Either way. So uh, best general, no matter what your um, points are uh, for paint, sports, comp, all that stuff, if you win, if you have the most battle points, you get best general, period. And then there's a second best general, third best general, um, best painting, best comp. Uh, so we, it was basically what it was the one for Nova, but this one has changed a little bit. Um, this one is doing best composition, so I think this is pretty subjective, and it just comes down to whatever the TO decides. Uh, that's, that's still okay. Yeah, you it's know, still like... okay. It's like which is the coolest looking army, like comp wise and theme wise. So it's going to be interesting how that works. Um, maybe the overall placing as the tiebreaker, the best comp should be the person who placed lower. Cause if they, maybe instead of higher, uh, best sportsmanship, obviously in last place. And then a tie would oh, go to the fewest objectives. I love the last place award. When, so I, went o and, when I went 0 and 3 at a so RTT fun. event, I was mad that I didn't get last place. Somebody else did. Cause I was like, if I'm going to go 0 and 3, I want to get last place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't skip me. Out. Yeah. Just do worse. Uh, okay. So, Man, why is this doing this? Let me move it over a little further for y'all. Hold on. Hold up. Wait a minute. Okay. So we got 2,000 points. Okay, good. My idea was 2,000. Yeah, it should be good. Okay. <clears throat> so no allies. Uh, max of three for not core. Max okay. of six that are core. And I realize there's ways to get around this. So if you're doing the Beastman Gorgon, if you're trying to run three Gorgons, you can totally do that. Um because two of them count as rare and a third one can count as special. So you can easily yep. run triple Gorgons here. And there's, yeah, no. pro- there's other units that can do stuff like that. So 
Arcane Journals, obviously. Uh, this doesn't say it, but clearly um, legacy armies are permitted. I don't think it says it here. It should say it right here, right after this. But legacy armies are 100% allowed. They will be allowed at any of our events unless something crazy happens. But like they're going to be allowed because no one wants to play with 40 people and there's only seven different armies. So screw that noise. Uh, maximum 10 wide for unit formations. This is also what Nova has. Uh, I think a good potential change for this could be like max of two extra guys that aren't in base, but in the front rank and swing instead of just 10 wide. So you could <clears throat> still do line hammer, but then so, you don't get full attacks. There's we're was, playing with the ideas right now. Yeah. Like I, 10 wide might be a little low. 15 is probably a good sweet spot eventually, but I looked at actually a screenshot from your latest video where you were playing the tomb Kings guy. His archers were like 26 wide. Yes. His tomb King archers. And I was right. like, man, that to me, that seems a bit, out there because it was like half the board long yep um but i mean like like 10 maybe a bit low 15 is probably where it's hard to mind. know so it yeah, could just yeah, be yeah. it's it's hard to like choose because we don't have like, the data yeah yeah know? like you know some some archers can't volley fire sure or, sure so they have to be in longer lines to shoot some of them oh he's saying it right here legacy pdfs oh. right here there it is okay yeah so i mean i'm just thinking about that just for Food for thought. You know, 10 might sure. be a little low. Um, but then you have to think about, like, if you're in 8th edition, I know, solely different edition, I never saw a single unit that was more than 10 wide. Like, ever. And I played 1,000 games of 8th yep. edition. So, And that's when volley fire, you could fire two ranks no matter what, not just Two half. ranks no matter what. Yep. So, like, my 20 block of archers would be 10-10. Whereas yep. now it's just like, all right, maybe I'm yep. like 15-5. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So it's like, that could change, but we'll have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. Proxies are welcome, obviously. Uh, so the scoring differential has changed from it was like 0 to 100 is a draw, and then it was like by hundreds. This is just changing it to um, by 200, and then 300, and then 500, and then 250. I haven't looked at this one. This is like the first time I've actually like I've skimmed it, but now I'm looking. So if you have lower differential and you have fewer categories for differential and points. I think it just makes so the scores are easier to track, I guess. Yeah. I, I easier for the most, player and easier I for the most TO. games to be in that zero to 500 range. And then, so like, you don't want to put, you know, yeah, the zero to 200 is, is good as like the, the draw. Then the two to five, I feel like a lot of games are going to be those 13 sevens. Um, yeah. Just think about brawlers. Um, Oh, brawlers, dude! I would have. It would have been gross. But like my last three rounds were close, um, within that sure. two to five hundred. But the yeah. first two rounds were a bigger disparity. But yeah, right. the, the the last three rounds were in those those closer bands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, score cap, y'all can see that. Uh, so a couple based from the Nova missions. This these. There are up to five or six um, extra victory points per okay. one instead of just three. That's nice. Yeah, I like those because it's like not just killing, which you might get a 13-7, mm -hmm. but that person who gets a seven might just get some bonuses. And yeah. Cool. So they, they could even potentially get a win out of that too, though. Mm -hmm. So you got you to gotta, – objectives actually come into um, – they come into play here. So if you, you get two points if you break your opponent and then one point if you break your opponent second. If mm -hmm. if both players um, break on the same turn, so that means if I break you first and we break on the same turn, I get four and you get three, right? Because that's math. Uh, plus one if you break and they don't break. So that means if I break first and I break and you don't break, or they break and I don't break, then you get three. Plus one have more banners on the table. So that's an interesting one. So that's that one, that can force people to take banners, which is yep. good because I think at the... Uh, a lot of armies had like basically no banners at Brawler Bash because not a lot of armies, but you only need like one, maybe two banners if you're building like as try hard, no comp as a list because you don't really need banners if you have a whole bunch of monsters. Um, and that's an interesting My army only to, had one banner. It's a good way to incentivize people to bring the banners yep. um, because you get the victory point as opposed to just getting plus one combat res, which might not be the most important thing. But, uh, you know, for some armies, it's going to hurt. 
that where banners aren't that important, but I'm okay with that because sure. I'm like for for me for Wood Elves, there was no reason for me to bring a banner. Trees can't bring banners. Dude, look at the I, chat. It is yeah. all Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, jeez, dude. He's like, carrying, carrying. I know. I can like scroll up and it's like, uh, no, yeah, and, and I, I like that though. Like, I like the incentivize to do different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like how, just so you know, it says plus one for causing unit to flee, blah, blah. It's just one. It doesn't stack. You can't get that yeah, like 20 yeah, yeah. times, obviously. You would think that, people would know. But that's this that, deployment, so it's easy. And see, I like, uh, I almost like this approach of it where, like, you know, we're not being too heavy with the comp, but you're incentivizing folks with the missions to mm -hmm. uh, think a little differently. Like, I think yep. there was, was there something in this one where, like, um, yeah, keeping the highest point thing alive or your cheapest thing alive, that's going to be fun. He, Todd was already doing that with his Warhounds. He was already thinking ahead of the game. He was keeping those Warhounds alive in that <laughs> game versus me. <laughs> Wait, where's that? No, this one says you keep your highest, not your lowest. Uh, uh. Well, there's maybe. probably there might be one with the lowest yeah yeah, yeah. You know, might be one with the lowest. Uh, and this one says you have to have at least unit strength 10 in a table quarter with no enemies so that does incentivize uh not units of five warhounds or whatever even though there's still be good chaff but like you need multiple units at least with unit strength 10 to try and claim objectives you can't just um uh, have one dragon ogre running around and you're going to hold something with no enemy units in the quarter no enemy units, which is interesting. So it's going to be it's hard. Be tough. Yep. It's be tough to get table quarters. Oh, it's the diagonal mission. Yeah. This. this one is, you start so close, man. Like this one is. Yeah. Whew, now, this is tough for me. Yeah, this is very tough for um, several armies. Uh, it's good for gun lines because you can just camp in this corner way down in the bottom here. I wish I could change that. Can I change this? I uh, I definitely I play this mission grudgingly, hey, hey, yeah. but I, I, if I if I get smoked during this mission, I'm I'm not surprised. All right, sacred ground. Uh, if you have a core unit with a banner on the table outside your deployment zone at the end of the game, okay. If you have a if you kill your opponent's BSB, score automatically if they don't have a BSB. If the BSB is fleeing, he counts as dead for the purposes of this mm -hmm. point. Okay. Okay. So you don't get the 100 extra points if you don't have a BSB, but you still get the plus one just total. Oh, man, that makes me want to take a BSB. Yeah, yes. I mean, even throwing a banner in, like, Glade Riders or something is, is useful just to kind of have it. Uh... See, oh, man, it's interesting that they're trying to force a BSB when it seems like many armies don't even need a BSB because it's not. It used to be an auto-include, but now yeah. it's it's just not an auto-include anymore. I'll give um, him the point for that. I'm not bringing a BSB. I can't. My what else? Just I can't do anything with him. Where am I going to put him? <laughs> yeah, uh, run him by himself around by himself. I guess. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. There's that's it's just not worth it for what else. So it it kind of sucks. You get penalized for that, but it's fine. Uh, it's right. Control in the center with the highest unit strength after turn one. I respectfully disagree. Who's talking? Oh, sorry, someone else. Um, not towards me. Uh, da -da -da. after turn one, up to maximum of three. Yeah, for so controlling the center. So what does that mean? How do you control the center? So if if you're within... Scroll up. I think there was a part in there about six inches from the center. Nice. Okay. There's like a sacred point or something like that. Yeah. Uh, at the end of each game turn, after the first, the player has the most unit strength within six inches of the sacred ground, get plus one. Okay, so that incentivizes uh, a big block of troops to go to the center and just sit there and hold it, which is fine. I mean, like, control the center. It's very mm -hmm. important. Mm, most unit strength. That's interesting because if I like, if someone flew a dragon up to the center, it's like I don't want to come to the dragon because then I get charged <laughs> and murdered and stuff. So it's kind of interesting. Okay. Or you uh, could have some awesome Godzilla vs King Kong spots there. You know. True. Uh, crush your enemy. I hate this deployment zone. Like this deployment when it comes to like tournaments when the tables are next to each other is the worst. Um, so hopefully we can have the tables. So there's like maybe a foot in between each table. So people can squeak by instead of having to go so, all the way to the end of like so Nova, six tables. Nova, it was bad because yeah. we were lined up nuts to butts. Mm -hmm. the edge. But like, uh, where we, up, just played at, we just played at, um, like empire. It would have been fine because oh, yeah. all the tables are separated. So I don't yep. know how I've never, I've never been to the Richmond center there. So I don't know how their yeah. tables are set up. Um, but yeah, you know, 
we, we you make it work cool. best you can. You know, if you're cool with your opponent, you kind of have them. Uh, you know, one guy is kind of helping you measure and moving. So that's that's the best way to get through a game in yep. three hours. Is you guys are working. You got a teamwork. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to work together there. All right. So, oh, did I even read the scenario? Eh, I didn't. Okay. Crush your enemies. If your general makes it to the end of the battle alive, it is not fleeing. You get plus one. Plus one up to plus two for controlling table quarters with more of your unit strength than your opponent has at the end of the game. So this one doesn't matter if your enemy, if there are enemy units in there, it's just you get plus one if you have more unit strength. But only up to two. So you can only control up to two table quarters. Hmm. Force enemy to fall back in good order. Oh, flee off the table. If you force <laughs> enemy to flee off the table, you get a plus one. If you have a banner, you deploy oh, opponent's deployment zone. Okay, so that's incentivizes. Oh man, in my opinion, this mission is really good for beastmen because they can have all sorts of banners pop up just on the back of the opponent's board mm -hmm. edge and just be like, so they'll they'll get a plus oh. one for taking an ambushing guy with a banner, or he might not come in. Oh no, no, in this game they come in automatically, right at turn. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this one, is, but beastmen have the a horn, so it's like I th I don't know if it's one use or if it's always, but uh, you take it on your character and your ambushing stuff gets the reroll. So okay. reroll to come in. I think it's a four up. So like you know, I, I'm forward. okay with folks having like a like a good mission for them. You know, or sure. Like that, it, it, beastmen it are strong out. now. Beastmen are strong. They're gonna yeah. be strong. Okay, so that's fun. Game five, and now just so y'all know, I'm. Nova will probably mimic these missions. They mimic the missions before the uh, this packet has changed, and I might just take these to run at Nova. I might minus one or two of these out to add a mission with objective markers in it, because that would incentivize um, more like blocks of dudes holding something instead of a monster, because sure. a lot of monsters are only unit strength six, and when we played WAP, we had to have, I think it was unit strength ten, had to right? Was that right? I'm trying to remember WAP. Do you remember Nova last year? We did. Um, you had to have. I unit think it was ten. Strength ten. Yeah. But core took precedent because yeah, core. We had to do that. Yeah, core counted as like double, I think, versus yeah, if yeah. an enemy had a special or a rare unit on that. So something like that would be just to throw some diversity, and it would change up how you want to build your list a little bit more too. But, but so. zombies, zombies were really good because they just marched over. Oh and they were god! Like, I counted eighty. <laughs> Gross. Uh, war is brutal. Uh, plus one. Your most expensive unit is destroyed of your opponent. We're fleeing. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, I knew there yep. was. Yep. Keep yep. your least expensive unit alive and not fleeing. There it is. Uh, why is this doing this? Get out of here. If your opponent's most expensive character is destroyed. So kill your characters. Have some your cheapest unit. Have a core unit in your deployment stone. And this is game five. So that's good. Um, I always like this terrain or this um, map setup for table for game five because everyone knows it. Everyone's used to it. This is the mission that most people play, or at least the deployment that most people play and they're used to. So it just makes it more calm and casual for like after a grueling uh, four games. So that makes it nice. And then, yeah, I like these uh, kind of tidbit um, secondary missions here where you're just mm -hmm. like, you know, if. If you happen to kill the most expensive, cheapest, like that kind of stuff, it just adds a little bit extra flavor to it because then yep. you're like, oh, I can't just run my dogs straight at them, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, let me actually keep them in the back for this mission. So it, it, that kind of stuff's always interesting. Approximately six tables, uh, semi balanced terrain. Players should not count on the set. Blah, blah, blah. Should not count on a hill or woods in every table. Yeah, 100%. Not every table should be the exact same. Completely agree. So uh, woods here are difficult and not dangerous, and all that means is uh, you don't have to take your tests for moving. You just yeah. have like your minus movement and your drop the highest dice. I think when you're charging. So I th let me see. The only difference uh, following rules for dangerous means it's also difficult. Don't care. That's fine. Oh God, there's buildings. I did. I literally skip over the building yeah. section in every rule book I read because I'm like, I never occupy them, and I hate anyone that does. There's <laughs> so F, I'm like, fair. I'm gonna have to read it. There's two things that I I don't like there being buildings. I like it and I dislike it because that's a whole new set of rules that people are gonna f up. And in eighth <laughs> edition, it was confusing. In WAP, it was confusing. Uh, not confusing. It was just like an extra layer. So yeah. I would need to read on buildings myself to see. Used to only be able to like 
five per floor, five units, 10 yeah. units strength per floor was there. And then it was like, you can only assaulting. select 10 guys to assault the building. So then it's like 10 on 10. And then some units can assault the building, but then they can't actually go in it. Can I stuff and my then, dragon in the building? Yeah. And then you can't, if you leave the building, you have to like put your models against the base of it somewhere and it's just it can get complicated and you know those are all from older editions this one might yeah be who knows simplest. yeah this might be the simplest building edition ever that would be cool it. okay Builders. so uh the only thing that i think will be different in terms of nova will be woods so i really like how it was in eighth edition and even in um wop so if you're infantry or uh you could let's see open order infantry or like swarms and beasts, they wouldn't take uh, dangerous. Um, but if you're like a chariot, or if you're cavalry, or if you're flying, it should be dangerous if you land in it, or if you march or charge. So uh, through the woods, which because it's like if you're galloping at full speed, you're not going to be as nimble. So like a chariot should, in my opinion, should take dangerous terrain from it. Uh, so should cavalry and all that stuff. So. That's what I'm going to play it as at Nova. So that, I think that's the one difference here. Um, let me make sure. Oh, it's difficult for dangerous chariots. I do like those yeah. uh, low and high linear obstacle pieces that are in there. I haven't gotten to use it with great effectiveness, but it mm -hmm. is nice having those kind of rules specifically in there. Kind yeah, of, I agree. You know, if you have the terrain, might as well play with it. Uh, I will also at Nova sometimes have a piece of terrain. So. The rules is written, I think it's nine inches. You basically says keep keep the circle empty in the uh, rule book. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think that should be the case in every single board. I think sometimes you should have a, a woods right here. And if there's a woods here, you don't have anything over here. But then sometimes you should have a building like right there, but then not have, you know. Sometimes oh. there should be something closer towards the center because that is just such like, it doesn't leave a lot of movement tactics. It's just like your skirmish flanking stuff is always going to go this way. Like, obviously, you can bait charges in the center and stuff, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I think sometimes you should rule? have something here. The what all special rule sometimes. for their wood specifically says, like, you can't do it within six or nine inches. I forget what it is. Gotcha. Of the center. So, like, I've always been deploying it, you know, on, on the edges of that circle. Oh. So, I've been abiding by it, but... Um, well, let's see. tend to hurt me more than they help me. Uh, Todd says the Richmond Open will have stuff in the middle. Okay, cool. Good, good. I think that's what, like, every every board not having something in the middle seems bad to me. It's just like, it's cookie cutter. Yeah, it's uh, instead of a woods over here, it's a building. And, you know, it's like the same thing. I Don't get me wrong, I like the terrain at um, Brawler Bash, but some diverse board layouts would be cooler. Uh, Philippus. Uh, or Flypus, I don't know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the chat. Uh, what happens if someone dies in a challenge? Does that mean the unit that the model was part of gets to attack first? Attack then? Uh, we did cover this earlier in the video. I think we're going to have to... no. I think the answer should be no. It should be just like how it was in 8th edition, um, where it, even in older editions, where it lasts the entire combat. You shouldn't be able to... If my dragon kills your champion in combat, the rest of my attacks from my unit should not be able to go with the dragon. Um, it does hurt uh, character builds that are doing and using that kind of shenanigans, but um, it also helps protect the unit because then the dragon or what have you can't stomp into the unit, so it kind of evens itself out. Um but maybe they're FAQ it, and maybe the intent was that you could continue to swing at the dragon. We don't know. It's a very gray area. Um, and I, I do want to hear from if there's pockets of the communities that are running it um, the other way. Sure. And, yeah, I'm curious too. And it seems like maybe that balanced out the dragons in mm -hmm. their group. Like, I'd love to could hear be. about that because, mm -hmm. you know. I run one, maybe one of the weaker of the dragons, but I know dragons are kind of oppressive for a lot of people, so, so that's a so, good way to tone them down. So and listen. I'm listening. I like creating lists for the events that I go to, so mm -hmm. the comps really don't bother me too much. I'll, I'll whip something up for whatever I'm going to. Okay. Um, but yeah, I am trying to scroll through and read through buildings here and towers as okay. I'm kind of like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I do think it's funny that uh, even though I'm not the one who created this this army comp thing, 
people were laying into me. Like, like I just posted the, um, cause I just copied and pasted it and people were like on the internet were going crazy about, Oh, you can't build a certain way. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, People so I don't think crazy. I got to read this. So the okay, so okay. the army composition, basically, you get a no score. The army is merely a collection of the best units and has no overarching cohesion of balance. AK two dragon lords, gun lines, slow for wizards, or other blah blah blah. Okay, so I mean, to me, to me, it makes, seems fine. It's like if you're yeah, building a sense. super if, try hard list, yeah, and you, you should get good for, comp. If you want to go there for best general and just like you know kick folks around, kick kick people in the shins. And you know, have a good time winning, then okay. But that army composition, if you just don't mind scrolling back up for me, that army composition doesn't affect your best general. That's just for your Wait, the Renaissance. Where, where PC, do you right? where do you want me to scroll up? Um to like the prizes, right? Oh, oh okay. Because uh, I think there was something in there for composition. Yeah, there's a best composition. Yeah, yeah. So this is just like a separate category. You well, know, no, like... it, it also it would affect your overall score. Right, right, right. So it's it doesn't affect own... it doesn't affect your best general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's just for its own category and the overall. Um, yep. I don't want to want to call him like a tournament mascot, but like the the um, this one best overall. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know Renaissance Man is a good term for it, but it's like this is the best. This is the person we should all aspire to because they yeah. are they are an amazing general. They are also a great painter, hobbyist, and they're a great sportsman. Like. They basically have to score mid to high on all of those categories. Mm-hmm. They might not win individually in all of those categories, but they are the person mm-hmm. that's like, hey, this is the person everyone should try and um, yes, just attain that kind of level because that's a fun person to play in all regards. So Yeah, and, and I like how you, know, you got three best generals on there. You got best painting, best composition. Your painting could suck. Your composition could suck. Your sportsmanship could probably suck. And if you go five and zero oh kind of thing, you're you're gonna win your best general. Right. You know you might. Not but you're not making favorite. friends. You're yeah, not. Yeah. You're not, not making any friends. Favorite. Now no, you I could. Totally you get could that. Now this is. You could still win best sport, but still get a zero army comp. Like you could destroy yeah. your opponent, but if you're like, hey man, I'll, let's go. Like I'll buy your beer, man. You know, let's hang out. Like. So you could still win best sport even if you have zero army comp. It's not only about what your list is; it's how mm-hmm. you are actually involved with your opponent. But all right, what's yeah. what's the five? Like uh, so the army looks like a proper Warhammer tournament army of its type. It has got a diverse spread of unit types, but it's designed to win without min maxing to do so. Most armies are going to score that. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, I feel that. Um, so like, okay. if you take if you take a regular dragon, but you don't give it all the nastiness or Right, right. Like if you take, you know, so, if you just spread around a little bit, it's fine. If I if I were to grade the list that I brought to to brawlers, I'd give you I a would, five. I would have actually said my list was a two and a half, right in between that zero oh. and five. Well, there there is no, it's just zero I five. Know, I know, I know, I okay. know. But it's like gotcha. I fall right on that line between a zero and five because I did bring a level four. I brought a dragon, um, not the strongest. That's dragon. fair. Fair. You know, well, yeah, it's good in challenges, but yeah, 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 not the strongest dragon, and it's not meant to kill the dragon's a defensive dragon, right? So, like, it, I can see an argument for a zero or a five. If I got either of those scores, I would not be surprised. That's right. kind of how I thought about That's it. That's fair. Um, I'd give yeah, mine so, a, I'd give mine a zero all day. <laughs> mine was a zero all day, all day. Um, so a ten. The armor is a proper Warhammer army with a strong theme. Army is diverse. Choices are made with a narrative over as. Oh, sorry. Choices are made for narrative aspects over competitive play. The army list is customized with an army name, name characters, and a small history of the force of man. Okay, so this is leaning more towards the lore. I'm just gonna use Owens because I, 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 you know, I always picture that one in my head when I'm thinking of like an awesome army, right? Okay. Like he's got this like Shogun ogre themed army. Um, looks mm-hmm. fantastic. Uh. It, he still has the mini guns for the lead belchers, that kind of thing. So, like, I can see some some lore, some character names, some history behind it getting tossed in, and that would be a good type there. Yeah. Um, so this is where I get confused. What if you have a not confused, but this is where it gets pretty. Sub, this is a very subjective list because what if you run a want to run a night goblin army? So if I wanted to run a night goblin army to get a ten here. I would say you don't only spam fanatics. Maybe you only put two fanatics in every unit, not three that you take. Or 
you don't only take man like max mangler squigs and then you maybe take some squig hoppers too because or you take those are good too but you take like the squig herds because mm -hmm. the squig herds are trash but like in terms of trying to get a 10 you want to do that so you're trying to play a narrative list as best you can but you're not maximizing the strongest stuff you can take so that you take a unit of trolls or you know like stuff that's not just pure night goblins you take the big spider like you can the night goblin list that went to brawlers uh only had like four fanatics even though they had like four. a million night yeah. goblin heroes they could have taken like up to 15 fanatics or something like that but they only took like four um and i feel like they were going for more theme than anything like, they weren't it didn't feel like they were power okay. gaming it um but yeah i i so I'm todd picturing... todd says a owen's army gets a five not a ten yeah, like I'm almost thinking like a uh, an index or uh, an army book picture. Like you, you you open up the wood elf book, you see like a tree man, some wild riders, some archers, some dryads, you know, right. a, a a mage on an eagle or something like that. Like pi uh, picture in an army codex is probably just like a nice nice fun list to go. With. I think um, an empire list could be easy. You do like mm -hmm. one cannon. You have like you probably don't take any demigriffs because demigriffs are so good right now. If you wanted to get a 10, maybe one unit of three max, no steam tank, a uh, bunch of state troops, a bunch of knights, and then uh, like <laughs> maybe two level twos. Actually, to get a 10, you probably don't take a level four. That's probably one way you can score a 10 is you don't take a level four and you don't take one big nasty character. That's Todd's, Todd's comment is kind of spot on. It's like Jesus. porn. You know it when you see it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. But you have to you have to disregard how pretty it looks, you know. Like so, you just it has to be army comp, not how pretty. But yeah, I so, think that's true. It's true. So that uh, dwarf player I played in round one, like I almost, I think I described okay. it as like a nice balanced hybrid yeah. list, where I was like, you got a gyro over two, you got some quarrelers, you got uh, I don't think it was an anvil, but you had a king with some shield bears. All of his characters had the shield bears. It was a balanced list of fighting, shooting. Like you, you, you could have, you know. And it looks like an actual battle ready throw, you know? Right. Okay, so sportsmanship. After game five, each player will write down two of their favorite opponents. The player with the most votes will win the best sportsmanship prize and will give be given a free entry to the next GT run by myself. <laughs> Zero to ten, each sportsmanship will vote will reward the player. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, you know what? That prize might be highly valued because trying to get into Nova and stuff like that was uh, pretty cutthroat. Yes, honestly, I. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, I hope we. They're they're still searching for more tables, so guys, keep your uh, hopes up. And on Friday, I think I'll be running a um an RTT on Friday. I have a couple polls out there on some Facebook groups, trying to see what kind of event people want to play on Friday. Oh, uh, I think of the Richmond Open. I don't think it's mentioned here. Hold on, one second. Uh, we also have as a prize the a golden ticket to nova so oh, okay yes it's not mentioned here but that is a thing um i don't know uh, i think it's probably going to go to best sportsmanship is that right todd like unless they already have a ticket then maybe it goes to sec second best sportsmanship or something but we how want about, huh? i'm say how about bet the renaissance person or is that uh too much for them are they already getting too much swag that's i think that was the thing <laughs> it was like they're already getting too much and yeah I um, can see that. but best overall probably should go to nova too and Maybe the person who wins best overall already is going to Nova. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I'm down think, with the best. Yeah. Sport. like, like that. Th those are the great people to play because uh, you know they could have a strong army, they could have a middle army, as long as they're having fun. Um, and generally, the best sport <clears throat> isn't going to drop out after a game or two. They're going to stay there the whole round. No, because you all have their to. Opponents. Yeah, you have to get the scores. So, um, th we, were, we were talking about this too because uh, you know Todd had a great chance of winning best sport because all five of his opponents, I think didn't drop out and stayed around till the, till the voting at the end. I know that's like, <laughs> so, if you had like, like, I think I, two of the players I played day one, I think dropped or like yeah. over the time to drop. So even, I'm not saying I would have won best sportsmanship, but like right. I have no chance at that point, right. which is kind so, of, um, I don't know if we ever kind of spitballed how oh. to make that better, but if your opponent drops, <laughs> do you ought to, well, do you automatically score max? No, I don't. I don't. You could well, just I'm do thinking about it because, like, what if they played three people? Then you could just do decide? day one sportsman. Like, not you ignore day four and five. You could just do 
you choose someone on day one. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, probably that's the best actually way. Good. Yeah, yeah. You best choose you one that. person day one, mm-hmm. and then you either choose somebody again from day one or somebody from day two for day two, just so that you get at least one vote in for people. No, that no, because then you still don't get any. No, I think it should just be day one because then if there's a day two and people drop, you can have no chance to win best sportsmanship. Oh uh, yeah. Not that the best person who won who is like if you're aiming for best sportsmanship, then you're probably not going to win best sportsmanship. Does that make sense? Like if you're like trying yeah, to be the yeah. best opponent, yeah. then you probably aren't going to win it. So that's interesting too. Now that I think about that. Um, okay. So uh, Ninja, what did you say? Ninja Kiwi. I'm on a long delay, but I just got to the rules to know section. Cannons cannot intentionally shoot into combat. It's yes, they can look at the shooting rules needs to, Declare a legal target first, then you can shoot. So Ninja, the problem is a cannon, you'll probably get to it, so the delay, you you might actually not hear this conversation for like another hour and a half. Yeah, you might not even stay. But the cannon just targets a point on the battlefield. Yeah. says nothing about targeting like a unit or anything of that sort. It's just like, you target that point, right? You target that blade of grass, I'm going to murder that blade of grass. And that's all you do, so it's crazy. Um... Oh, thank you for commenting that. That's great. Yeah, just get now, a little, little F them. Make them, make them wait. Make them wait two hours later. God, it's already 11. So I got to wake up at like 5, I think, because the flight, the only flight that was direct to uh, Chicago. Oh, I'm going to Adepticon. Are you and, going to Adepticon? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to Adepticon tomorrow morning, and I will be filming as much as I can um, on Thursday and Friday. I'm doing the RTT on Thursday and then the doubles on Friday. And then I'm playing 40K on Saturday and Sunday. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I am. So it's a four-man team. It'll be fun. Yeah, um, so I've never been to Adepticon. It's one of those nice. ones where I do want to get out Thank there and talk. go. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of these years, I'll get out there. But pl- planning has always got to be the worst thing for me to try to get out for something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, but uh, it's amazing to see. Like, if you watch mm-hmm. any of the videos from that I filmed last year, it's like, it's huge. It's, it's just like Nova. Uh, I don't know which one's larger, but Man, there's so many people and there. The armies are gorgeous. Oh, it's crazy. I just awesome. saw what Todd said. It's like, and see, that kind of goes against what some of the people on the internet were saying, where the best sport, you, you're like, you can't bring a really hard tournament list and still get best sports. Like, you totally can. Todd's yeah. list was super duper strong. Totally can. We had a great time playing. Uh, he got my best sport for for that thing. But it's like, you could definitely bring like a, like a shin kicking list and mm-hmm. still get best sport. Just, yep. It's all about attitude. Yeah, yeah. And don't be a butthead. <laughs> yeah, don't be a butthead. And if you're kicking someone's ass, you know, be like, let me buy you a beer. Consolation right. prize, you get a beer or something. Yeah. You know, that's all. Yeah, no, we were, yeah, like we had no issues. Um, and that's the thing too is like it, just because you guys call judges or like have rules questions, like that is not a negative. Yeah. Like, it's it's just like, hey, we just want to check this out because I'm not confident, they're not confident. Yep. If you have to call judges because someone's being a butthead, then that's a problem. Yep. And I was getting hate on that yeah. too. It's like, oh, yeah. well, if you call judges over, it doesn't mean you're having a bad game. Yes, I know, guys, clearly. But like, yeah. you, you, you should be able to discern the difference if I just say you're having judges called compared to like you're getting angry at each other. Like, come on. Yeah. But that's the internet, you know. And I know, I know, last Nova, I got a one for my sportsmanship from one opponent. And. You know, I know that I'm a pretty decent person to play against. I probably don't deserve a one, but you know what? I live with it, took it in stride, and um, I'm trying to remember who that was. I probably have the sheet still too on Google Sheets somewhere, so I could actually figure that out. Yeah, they were. Um, oh, I remember now. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but it was one of those things where it was like, you know, yeah, my list was strong, mm-hmm. but we actually misplayed, which was we learned later. We, I, yeah. we misplayed. Mm-hmm. how things worked because i didn't know that because i'm a wood elf only player i try to learn other factions as i play them but yep. i didn't know that chaos characters have to declare challenges sure um which would have actually totally changed that whole combat around and we didn't find that out until later um that that the whole situation would have been changed yep. so more you know ne- next you time know. next time i play chaos now i'm always like does your, does your guy have to challenge like <laughs> do you have to do that what do you what do you mean you hate game scoring? People can tank you knowing effects, blah blah blah. Oh, you mean like purposely give someone a low sportsmanship score? But like Yeah, I, I think know. that's what that was I think that's what I was referring to. Um for, for I mean for Nova last year, 
where there was like a like a game scoring after each game. Mm. Um, I think I gave everybody fours and fives. I think there was every there was only almost everyone gave people at least a three. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. there were only a couple ones and twos. And if there were a one or two. I went and talked to both players to figure out why they gave the opponent a one or two. I'm not going to let someone just give someone a one and then have nothing happen because if, or a two. And if I walked up to one opponent and they said, um, I just asked like, Hey, how was your game? And they tell me, it was like, Oh, it was a great game. We had fun back and forth. But then the other person gave that person a one. I go ask, why did you give them a one to force them to explain it? And if they get all jittery and they're like, uh, uh, like clearly they tank their score on purpose and, I can usually pick up on that. So like, and, and that's, and I, wa- I do get to walk around and watch the games played too. So like I can hear and see what's going on at almost every table, not at every instance, obviously, but like the, the I, ongoing yeah. scoring that you're doing, kind of keeping that average going True. is a good way to have, if people drop out, you know, that doesn't hurt the person's average. Right. For the end of the tournament. You yeah. Know, it's just kind yeah, of yeah. like, it's there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pros and cons to each one. I can totally see it, but again, common sense. We're we're generally adults here. You know, we can generally we can kind of, we can kind of work stuff. Adults out playing can. with our toys. <laughs> uh, but I think that's good because this pack covers basically what Nova's going to be. Um, I think this covers the missions that Nova are going to be. Cons, uh, comments kind of funny. Which one? You know, if if you keep track of the worst sport at the event, like. I don't know if you give out an award for worst sport, but <laughs> it would at least do an interview on the channel for Dude, once. <laughs> I said that at Brawlers, and I was like, "Man, like being getting the worst sport is like you. If you hear you get the worst sport, you may never come back to an event, and I don't want that to happen. Right. I would rather that person learn how to can maybe not like conduct themselves in a more approachable manner. I don't sure. want someone to be outed." Unless I know that person previously or like, man, you're just a dick. You're just gone. You know, like that's fair. If if someone gets that low sportsmanship score, I would definitely chat with them, not in public. I just talk to them and be like, hey, man, like, you know what I mean? I would have a heart yeah. to heart oh, yeah. and just oh, be like, yeah. yo, we need to we need to work on this because we're trying um, to grow the community. We, not yeah. It. Yeah. I'm if like you're going to be a dick the whole time, then, you know, I don't want you playing here. And I I won't say that, but it's like. We need to we need to work now, on this. And a lot of times, you would think that you no know, alcohol being served at events like that, it's usually not the drunk folks that are the worst sports. You know, they might be a little sloppy with their play and you know slow and stuff like that. But sure. it's 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 usually not not the uh, the town drunks <laughs> that are the worst sports. It's they're true. Usually just... <laughs> they're usually sometimes the best and be like, take sometimes a shot with me. Sometimes you know? they're late for their rounds. Right. Because... <laughs> so this is the comp for Nova. Some of it might change. Um, I think this can stay. I really love the 35% characters. I think I've heard a lot of people okay. like it. And I've heard a lot of people dislike it because so. you, that you can still take a level four and like three level twos. So if you're complaining about magic, not, not being able to take a lot of magic, you still can do it. It just forced you to take, you can't take. Okay. If I didn't do 35% characters at 2,500 points, you could take two chaos dragons. And no one wants to see that kind of crap. So you could, instead of limiting characters, you could just say only one character can go on a behemoth creature. There this are is other 2, ways. 2,500 points? Yeah, 2,500 points. 2,500 points um, times 2,500. You you spend... If Blue tells me X is a dick, he is not coming to my event based on Blue's event. <laughs> yeah, got it. Like, that's fair. There's There's been people that have been banned at certain stores, and most store owners or people that run events have like a local area where they either run events or attend and they talk to each other like, Hey man, this guy caught, got cheating or he's been a huge dick. So he's like, okay, well then he's banned at my store too. Like that is a thing. So 875 points is that cutoff for characters. Yep. And I'll tell you right now, the list that I was cooking for Richmond is like 920 ish for characters. So I have to shave off some points to, run that list over here okay so i could see that and now yep. what well, that has you drop a dragon, like 30 a four. 30 points yeah. and you then add an extra 500 points of non-characters mm-hmm. okay. sounds great no, i'll test that out i'll give you some feedback um i don't like I, character seems hammer. reasonable yeah, it seems hammer. reasonable just not a fan seems um, reasonable any armies the complaints that you're getting are I they might... from certain factions that's the thing a lot of people that are complaining not complaining. They're just critiquing. I'm okay sure, with critiquing. Sure, sure, sure. A lot of people that are critiquing 
only maybe have three armies max, right? Some of them only have one. A couple people are like, I have six armies. Okay, that's cool. Um, a lot of people think that this is based on ego, and I have already changed the comp several times based on people that are actually talking to me like a person. So instead of just, you know, like being a troll online, so I will gladly listen to people's qualms. And like for one, I think this one could be removed. Like detachments use zero to three slots. Um, use detachment like, roles. Yeah, it's, like... it's, it's interesting. So that could be removed because then it's just going to count as the regular rule of three. That's fine. Uh, I think max and wide for closed and open formations. That could change the 15 or the two extra on each side. Not sure. Um, this could change max two characters in a unit because if I just build the scenarios out to where having a bunker unit is not optimal, then people aren't going to want to put two characters in a unit. So you could just build the scenarios to not be with that, right? I like max two of the same rare choice, even though there are ways to get around it, such as the Gorgon. But if uh, but Gorgons can be frenzy baited all over, so if you have enough chaff to deal with them, you should be okay. Um, does that detachment rule hurt Empire? Like, handgunner detachment, handgunner detachment, and then, like, you can't take a unit of handgunners kind of thing? Like, I'm just trying to think of, like, what is that detachment rule trying to get or trying to um, stray away from? Well, Jonesy suggested it to me, and mm -hmm. it sounded logical when he explained it. Um, it had to do with... Uh, I think it was just based on like what he thought he could do with the Empire if that detachment rule wasn't there. Okay. Um, I'll have to ask him again to see if he could, because I don't sure, remember sure, at, this, sure. at this current like, moment, I, think, I don't remember. I think Empire has detachments. I know Skaven has detachments. Dwarves have detachments. Oh, they do? Um, Ooh, there's, so, there's a lot of armies with detachments. Okay, okay. Um, I can see where that could get around some of the choices that you're talking about, where if mm -hmm. they really want to bring X unit, they could literally go yeah. six or nine. Uh, so, okay, I can see that. Todd, I agree. I think the 500 extra points, and that's why it was. It's like, I don't want you to take two dragons. Now you only have one dragon on the field, and you have 500 extra points to build something to counter the dragon. Like, that was the main thing. It's like, I, we, need people, we need people to be able to counter that big nasty, or if you're Tomb Kings, two dragons. Like, the extra 500 points, that's, you know, you can take three cannons instead of the two that you maybe were taking before. So, so uh, Great cannons for Empire are special or rare? So you know, off the top of your head, the what great cannons for Empire? Special, just special. They're special, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So, so you, you could, could still take three there. You could take plus a steam tank. Uh, you could take in this with this format. You could take three cannons and two steam tanks. Gross. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, like so. Well, okay, so so Empire's not hurt that if, bad. If that is possible, mm -hmm. I just want to like know. The rules for the shooting, right? So, like, so you mean I'm shooting into as, combat, that kind of thing? Yeah. So, like, I'm not as worried sure. about the cannons and sure. all that stuff if they're not Chris Kyle on a 50 cal. Right. 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 So, and you know what? If if our FAQ is reasonable, then take five or six cannons, you know, because you might need six of them to land those shots, which I'm okay with. Well, once you kind of get a hold of it, you're like, okay, you can't shoot over the hills, you can't right. shoot over the woods, mm -hmm. you can't shoot into combat. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Take six cannons, you know, like fine. That's I mean, a lot of fine, points. I think it's yeah. like nine hundred yeah. points or something stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Six. But seven. when I'm thinking of the game I just played, where the four of them were tough, I'm like, oh, six is gonna be. Well, five, three, and two steam tanks. Oh yeah, three and two's okay. okay. Right. But that's six. like, uh, hold on. How many how many points is uh, six cannons? They're six. They're hundred twenty five a piece. So one hundred fifty. What? 125, 125, 125? There's six of them. Oh, oh. No, no, no. Why did I say six? I'm sorry. It's just three. Yeah, I don't know why I was doing six. That's because you said six cannons. That's right. How much are so, steam tanks? Uh, 265. So that's... Um, uh, 905? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so... Like, that's almost half your army into just artillery. So if you're planning against someone who's, like, just rushing forward, like, they're going to freaking get there. Um, but, like, if you're running monster spam... Then that army is gonna yeah. mess you up. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. it makes that's you not I... want to run monster spam. So that's good. Well, at the same time, it's almost like, do you want to? Do you want? Does it incentivize you to do monster spam? Because then you have at least some target threat. 
you know, like you have too many monsters for him to kill sure. all at once. You know, it's just kind of like. Well, then you take uh, monsters that are cheap. And yeah. then, so it's like, then you have all your other points and other stuff. So yeah, there's ways to build around it. Yes. And, um, and as long as there's options, there's I like options. that. And if they play a Beastman player with like four ambushing units, <laughs> it's like, oh, buy cannons. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, so there's, there's ways to get around the cannon jankiness. That's for sure. So on our trip back, I think I said, I was pretty confident <laughs> in this and I'm going to see how it holds up. Was that um, unbreakable things? Like uh, like stubborn shield wall unbreakable are really really strong huge, um, huge. skirmishers like cheap cheap skirmishing shooters like mm-hmm. peasant bowmen tomb kings type stuff and like they're hitting on fives anyway it doesn't matter they're just super yep. cheap like that stuff is really really good and not and not good from a it's uh how does I say it it's not good from a power perspective it's just good from a points per value type of perspective where it's like these things are so cheap that they're good right um so yeah like i want to see what people cook up for these type of events Mm -hmm. with unbreakable stubborn stuff in mind yep Uh, because i feel like that's going to kind of be the next move of the game where you have monsters and can monsters and war machines are kind of the beginning of it right yep. monsters monster slayer is the beginning of it mm-hmm. second wave might be moving more towards the stubborn unbreakable how do i not just break from terror kind of stuff sure. so that might be the next kind of wave of it and who knows what the third wave is and where we settle but i don't know it's a new game obviously stuff's evolving as we go uh let me find it so i was listening to a podcast uh i don't remember where i was driving um, I think it was, uh, I think it was old world fanatics. I think that's right. Um, props to props to all the, uh, anyone that's doing podcasts and videos. Like it's so great to have all this content. Like originally it was just like a couple people. And now there's all this content you can actually view and watch, which is awesome. But props to, um, they, they pointed out that, um, the phalanx formation, or like I don't know if you saw the tomb guard list I posted, but you can if you don't have good missions written in such a way to avoid this type of army, you can easily have one badass tomb king on a bone dragon who's like nigh unkillable, make you reroll a wound and all that. But then you can have just one massive unit of seventy plus tomb guard with stuffed full of all the other characters that you can. And in the phalanx breakable. formation, it means you don't give ground. So even though they're unbreakable, uh, okay. you can't push them off the table. And you won't get the points because you have to kill over 75% of the unit to only get 25% of the points. And you have to kill like 56 plus tomb guard. There's, there's just ways to build bunker units that are uh-huh. insanely powerful. So you... You have to have some kind of missions and comp to like dissuade from that. So ogres um, had that challenge in eighth edition where yeah. uh, ogre bus challenge, the benefit. Yeah, they had the bus the where they bus. had like you know three characters maybe four all in this giant unit sure. and um, mm-hmm. I think I played Owen um, back in brawlers back in like 2016. I got best little back then too, um, oh. but he smoked me. I barely got any points from him because I could not touch this bus with tiny little wood elf things. Sure. Um, but yeah, like I could see that being where folks might go to if they want to make a really strong tournament list. Just so I'm gonna pack everything in this. There's no pit of shades. There's no purple sun that can kill me um, mm. in this edition. So it's gonna be really hard for you to break it. And yes. if you do break it, you're only gonna get 25 percent points. <clears throat> it's like the answer to bunkers in eighth edition were purple sun, dwellers below, dwellers, and yeah. pit of shades. But now that those like removed from play, almost a whole unit is gone, it kind of brings bunker units back into the fray, uh, depending on the mission. Like, if it's like if you're just playing the GW missions, like, you could easily build a bunker, not care about table quarters, and just go murder. So, you have to have, like, some of the other stuff. Um, but I think that covers about everything. Do you have any uh, final thoughts? I, I'm tired. I, any look, fire yeah, thoughts? What at, you got? Look at Richmond. Um, Dwarves always have that kind of gripe or their grudge that they don't do well in scenario type objectives because mm. they're tiny little legs. They can't 
quite get out to the objectives and stuff. But there is um, the bonus points in this one are um, keeping a cheap unit alive, keeping an expensive unit alive. Mm -hmm. There's not just holding a point, holding a table quarter, which they could do. There's funny little little things they can do. Um, Miners? Can miners still ambush? I don't know if they have access to the magic on the anvil to move their units or anything, but you could be scooting things forward onto what is it? The stroller's rune that Alex takes to take on stuff. Yeah, you but then you you vanguard three inches. <laughs> I mean, it's there. It's, it's yeah. not what it, you in the WAP. It was six. Now you just vanguard three. It's so bad. But I like they how ambush. in that one it did have some options where it's not just you're trying to get to this point in the middle of the battlefield. It's like. Yeah. I can keep something alive to get some points. I can um, kill an expensive thing, get some points. So I think dwarves will not suffer in that kind of um, environment, as some may think. Oh, I loved that Chaos Dwarf stadium seating blunderbuss unit from um, Brawler's Bash. I did get pictures of that. I need that so bad. If someone has pictures of that, please send that to me and I'll post it around. So it's one of those things where it's just so so silly to see this gigantic unit of blunderbusses that's shooting D3 shots. And these dwarves are on this base that is like a stadium seating where they have the front rank, second rank, third rank. And um, if you get anything close to that unit in the front arc, you're going to get melted. And it was just so fun to see. That's that's all. That's all. Except you can't volley fire from stand and shoot. Right, Jerry? Hey. You can't volley fire from stand and shoot, and only the front rank can do it. Um, Which means you don't get the rerolls to wound or whatever the hell it is. But I also screwed up probably a couple times when I did my uh, stand and shoot. I have five archers in the front and a sixth dude in the back, and I was using him for my stand and shoot because I didn't know that I could not shoot with him. So. One random arrow here and yeah. there probably didn't swing things, but <laughs> probably not. But you know, <laughs> I live and learn. Okay, guys, I think we're gonna call it there. It's been about a little over two hours, so uh, actually three hours. No, almost about well, basically three hours. So thanks for joining. Um, let's see what's next. Uh, I'll record as much as I can from Adepticon. Uh, keep playing your games. Keep posting pictures. Uh, learning new rules. I will post around the. Uh, the FAQ that we have going and the like rules rules to remember so people can just read those before events and keep at it. Um, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, Todd, thank you for all the questions and um, just honestly keeping the chat going. <laughs> Richmond, May 5th, May, May yes. 4th and 5th. Uh, still some spots open. Nova, Two spots open. Two spots Nova's open. Labor Day weekend, September. Yep. Early September. Yep. And um, there's there's also an event in March 30th that Todd is running down in Newport News. I think it's at World Best Comics. I might be wrong. He could he'll post it in there. Uh, then there's also on 420. Yes, 420 at Battlegrounds. I'm running a another RTT that is basically another practice. So we have two RTTs prior to Nova or prior to the Richmond Open as like good practice RTTs for people mm-hmm. to like warm up and get the rules right and just slam some games in. So 3.30 down in Newport News and 4.20 in Midlothian, Virginia. And then uh, we have the Richmond Open. And then several months later, at the end of August, we have the Nova Open. And before Nova, we will be running some RTTs as well. Make sure you guys, if you guys don't have tickets yet for Nova, sign up for the wait list because you get an email when tickets are added. Mm-hmm. Um, we recently had a couple tables get added. Email went out, so you had a chance to kind of grab them. I was one of the They lucky went folks. gone Yeah, it was like minutes. six or seven minutes. Yeah, it was sure. something crazy. I, yep. I got a ticket, luckily, um, nice. or else I was going to have to kind of be on the sidelines as a ringer. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, just more people or on the judge. wait list. Or judge. True. Uh, I, I firmly believe more people on the wait list means more visibility and more likely that tables will get opened up for you. Yes. So. And at Nova, uh, be aware, we will be opening a RTT. Once I get back from Adepticon, I'll like start doing the details of all that. I'll be doing an RTT on Friday. So there be could be singles or doubles. Not sure yet, depending. I'll look at the polls. I put polls up everywhere. I said this earlier. And then um, on Saturday and Sunday is the GT. So uh, go vote in the poll if you can find it. The Facebook groups are, there's two that are like Warhammer of the Old World. And there's two of them on there. And then also join the Square Hammer Facebook group. It's set to private. I wish I could change it back to public. But once you set the group, you can't change it. Uh, and I don't feel like recreating the group. So private's good because then we can only invite and have people who we want. But uh, thanks, guys. Um, that's it. So Square Hammer out. Stay square. 
and uh, take care.